Okay. That may mean this has actually worked. Ooh. Technology finally catching up to us uh, after uh, a month of uh, <laughs> delay <laughs> uh, for one reason or another. This is Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew D&D 5th Ed camp, uh, campaign. We are missing one player, we hope only temporarily. Thank you, Vanna, for, for demonstrating. Um, I have he all... should be He should be joining us towards the break, so uh, in a couple of hours, if we last that long. Uh, new lights, a couple of new curtains, and nothing else new. Absolutely nothing. Just new ideas and and old characters. Let's talk about some of those old characters. First of all, I marked the encaffeinated one, GM, uh, host, uh, probably the one to blame for most of what goes wrong. But we have empty chair. Hopefully Jody will join us eventually. <laughs> and I'm, I am Marie. I play Elzara, the uh, wood elf druid. I forgot what she was for a second. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, I believe she's currently fire. You're fired. I'm fire. Uh, I'm Pat, currently playing Kushima Ironbound, who's a little lizard guy. I believe I'm currently fire, if I can have the fire elemental. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Let's represent fire properly. Yes. I also found the battery. Oh, oh nice. Oh. It lights up. Mm -hmm. And we'll see that on the, on the map screen later. Me. Hi, I'm Nax, and I play Zakia Half Elf Wizard. He's got... Well, not critical, but he's not doing so well, and now part of him is Dre. I, I like that his name is now Zachis Half Elf Wizard. Right, Zachis Half Elf is my middle name. Yeah. <laughs> All right, a little recap as we try to remember what the heck we're doing. Uh, still in the land of shadow, the group continued to go deeper into the deep, angry forest of festering, which varied, varying from the direct route to the center, at Radix's suggestion, to avoid danger. Unfortunately, the strange infection in Zakas' arm seems to be growing rapidly, revealing itself to be more than just a rash or a disease. Gazima recognized it as the... Did I get it right? I'm always yep. going to second-guess myself mm -hmm. on that name. Gazima recognized it as the spawn of the Mind Flayers, and their diagnosis is not hopeful. After traveling through Festering, Solidatus Sodolitus, I'll, get it, I'll never get that one right, stumbled on a strange, calm clearing filled with healthy, bright green clover. There they met a halfling named Corin, sitting on a stone, who offered them an exchange to help Zacchaeus and remove the infestation he would need them to retrieve his ring from a pair of trolls the group had seen earlier. But they were far away, and time was short. Kazima combined several abilities together to move swiftly to the troll's den. There they managed to taunt and confuse the trolls into following them back to the clearing, much to Corin's surprise. Corrin lifted his protection on the clearing, and a battle ensued. The trolls were burned into oblivion. There's no simpler way to put it than that. But they did not carry the ring with them. After a quick trip back to the den, the group found the ring and other things, and delivered it back to Corrin. Upon putting the ring on his finger, Corrin transformed into a tall, green, elf-like being, presumably his truer form. True to his word, he extracted the parasite from Zacchaeus, which had begun transforming his arm, his shoulder, and one eye into a gray-blue semblance of a mind flare. The creature was removed and killed, but Zacchaeus remained changed from the experience. Freed now from his mystical chains, the strange green elf revealed that he had been bound to this spot for almost 750 years by one Imral Amakir required to protect Imral's underground tower. He released the protection and the illusion from the area with a whistle, and wished the group good luck. As he walked off into Festering with another whistled magical tune, Zacchaeus recalled stories from older scrolls in the library of Finn the Whistler, a fae being that once supposedly was the lover of the elven goddess of music, Fala Lily. As the vines and branches of Festering greedily moved back to take back the clearing, the group turned to the plain rock where Corrin was sitting. It seemed unremarkable. Alzara leaned forward for a closer look, her fiery form throwing tremendous heat, and could detect a faint scent of burning blood, one of the few clues. And now we begin with that. Blood. Clark is looking nervously out at the, <laughs> in, the uh, now rapidly regrowing festering around you. The ring is shrinking inward. 
as it moves forward, tentatively at first, as if for a long time it had been held not only at bay, but almost in fear of the strange, healthy clover. But as it starts to crest over the newly barren ground, it seems to become more bolder and pushing inward. Well, I'm going to say, it smells like burnt blood, and I'm going to basically run around in circles and try to keep the festering at bay. Okay. Basically, just pacing. Okay. All right. As you move closer, they do take take uh, some attacks, but most shrink back immediately from the fire. It's many of them burning themselves actually in the fire as they attempt. So, I have but, a speed of uh, fifty feet, so I'm basically just going to like dash and walk the uh, walk a perimeter. Okay, doing a perimeter. We'll say they've got a couple of attempted attacks in. I don't think that they can hit you. Oh, actually. Uh, actually, they probably can. Uh, well, I don't think the eights hit. But the 19 might hit. Definitely, because I have a 13, because I don't have my shield up. Oh, oh that's right. The shield went uh, went down. The shield didn't even go up. Mm-hmm. I turned, I transformed before putting it up. Ah, uh, okay. I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, you take seven points of uh, magical piercing. Mm, and nice. that's basically representing a few revolutions that they've tried to go around. But okay. they are, for the moment, keeping keeping back. Pushing in other areas as you're not there, but then kind of getting cleaved off as you pass through. Your fury form itself is enough to keep most of them uh, at bay. What are the rest of you doing? Clark is looking nervously at them, seeing that you're being effective, but also kind of standing on guard. So, somewhat effective. So, do I know anything about rocks that can smell like burning blood? Or like blood Nothing particularly comes to mind. And how similar is this to, uh, well, way back in the beginning, we were in this, like, drowned temple, and Salazar raised the big-ass temple out of the ground... Could this be done here? Maybe. Okay. You don't know this magic. No, yeah. I don't. I <laughs> don't know what spell he used to do that with. Or if it was even a spell. This doesn't look like the top of one of those temples, but it could be the same effect. I'll touch the rock to like try to gather clues about it. Okay. Uh, make a perception check. It's a rock. What'd you get? It's not a library. I got it's, a one. You got a one. <laughs> Are yeah, suddenly, suddenly you feel uh, a, an emptiness. You know, when you used to walk through the library stacks and just every once in a while extend out your hand and run your fingers lightly across the, the vertically stacked uh, uh, pile upon pile of books or catch a scroll and it's, it's, its essence and smell does not smell anything like what you are right now and nothing feels like it. In fact, the right arm that you're using feels somewhat numb, almost rubbery. Got any ideas? No, I'm I wish I was back the at the rock. library. Okay, I'm looking for an entrance. Okay, uh, make a perception check as you move around the rock. Seventeen. Seventeen. Scaling around the rock, you notice that it seems featureless, almost too featureless, in fact. Um, and you start to run your fingers along the edges of it. As you do. Your nails scrape a little bit along the edges, along the edge of the rock, and you feel a little grit built up like underneath your, your fingers as you bring the grit and kind of sniff it a little bit. It smells vaguely uh, like copper, um, vaguely like dried blood. But you don't see any color difference in what's on the rock. It's, it seems to be camouflaged. Anything? I think there's some old dried blood here. Mm. Really? Try stabbing your hand? Mm-hmm. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> you might want to come over here because you might need to burn it. Um, but yes. Mm. Mm. Okay. You take your dagger and, and scrap, uh, scrape out a, a bit of a, of, a, of a scratch across your hand. Take one point of damage from that. And then place your hand on the rock. And pulling your hand back, there is a line splotch of fresh blood on the rock, which seems to go gray. And then in a second or two, it's almost invisible. Well, it goes gray. I poke it. Like, <laughs> where he, where yeah. they put the, the finger, the, the, the uh, same sort of sensation, uh, but a little bit uh, more fresh as a little smoke whiffs up from where you burned that blood off. Yep, I, I continue. That don't work. I continue my perimeter. <laughs> okay. I'll try to put in the gray hand on the gray rock, see what happens. Okay. 
Make a perception check. It's the same check. color. This will work. It's eight plus. Eight. <laughs> it's about the last option ten. we have. Yeah. Okay. Ten total. Yeah. Okay. You put your hand on the rock, and you do notice that yes, the the hand's color is actually fairly similar to the rock. Um, and you also notice that your your fingernails have all gone fairly translucent and white. Yeah. Uh, it almost doesn't feel like your hand uh, setting it on the on the rock. You pull the hand away, and you notice that the the underside of your hand is also slightly damp, um, but you realize with a little bit of dismay that that's actually coming from your hand. It seems to exude a little bit of, of, of moisture. As you as you kind of rub your fingers together, you notice that there are small amounts of, of uh, grit, which seem to have a, a gooey substance, probably of blood. Okay. So from that, you can tell that there are, there are Blood that you're not seeing, not mm -hmm. all over the rock, only in certain parts. And with that, I'll allow you to make a. Um, hmm. What do we want to call this? Let's call this a. a uh, call this an arcana roll. Well, four plus thirteen. <laughs> so twenty. 17. 17. So you kind of step back a little bit, a bit baffled by this situation. And then there's the <laughs> of uh, Alzara whipping around and, and keeping these things at bay. You can see that despite your best efforts, despite your best efforts, yeah. it is inching slowly in. In yeah. fact, you almost don't notice where the edge of the ring was before. It's now obscured and jagged as these different bits and pieces are going yeah. through. As long as I stole it, that is my, my intent here. Um, you're slowing it, definitely. <laughs> okay. um, but as you as you think about this, the thing that sort of occurs to you, and then you put your hand kind of on another spot on the rock and pull your hand away, and realize that your hand has crossed over what is some sort of line deliberately placed on there, mm -hmm. and another line. And where there was another spot, there probably was another line. This is essentially writing. And then you think, well, there's no access to ink here. Yeah. The only thing that you could potentially write with, though it seems plentiful, would be your own blood. Okay. So there is something written on this rock, but the rock itself is obscuring the actual substance. Great. There's something written in here, uh, in blood. Yeah, I figure there's probably an illusion covering it. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that. Maybe there's something I can do. Nothing I can do either. So eight non non magic or actually eight, eight magical piercing, mm -hmm. followed by thirteen magical piercing, as they are starting to get more aggressive and spinning around. Uh, you trying to trying to entrap you. That's not possible, but in trying to do so, the thorns are being dragged right straight through your form, and you can uh, you can notice the bit more raggedness in your form at the moment. Cool. Can you uh, dispel the illusion? I'm going to use try. a third level. Get some health. Uh, actually, I'll just do first level. Okay. You're going to expend a spell for healing? Yeah. Okay. First for eight. So, some sort of writing here. Dispel magic level five. Okay. So you reach out cast a spell magic and very quickly spreading over the entirety of the rock is revealed okay. these dried lines written with uh, presumably blood you can now see this sort of faded it's still gray because the, the blood itself is probably ancient but they've been repeated numerous times and you can actually see a few places where it's been repaired and as you look at it, you see this wonderful mandala of written symbols all over the top of it. Um, you're picking out symbols for divination over there, and that one is definitely illusion and transmutation. And in, a, in an instant, you recognize this as the collection of all the magics described here and inscribed here uh, as though almost like a teaching book itself. And you flash back to when Emerald had done some of the teaching to you initially. He hadn't done a lot. It was more like he was a guest lecturer who would come in from time to time. 
and he had this entire lecture about the interwoven nature of the magic that they understand and that there were magics outside of what you understood and this very much reminds you of some of the patterns he had shown you as a mnemonic to try to remember how each of the magics interweaves with each other. Mm -hmm. You can see one space which has been burned off, presumably where Elzera got too close to the flame. Uh, you can see the, the, a bit of the, the, the red line, the fresher red line, where uh, Kazima had, uh, had smeared his own blood across that. You also see nine gaps in these uh, corresponding to each of the each of the magics plus one um, within the pattern, a gap that looks about uh, about a, a little bit less than a thumb's width across. Um, that seem to be circular gaps in there. Um, from your arcane learning and from what you remember, you start to realize that these gaps essentially are uh, inputs for power. Okay. And this whole thing is some sort of magical mandala um, that needs to be empowered. You do need to repair a bit of it first because part of it was removed. Um, make a, a, a d10 roll. D10. Two. Two. So there seems to be a gap. That was entirely random. It's kind of neat. In the conjuration section, since you are a conjuration specialist, you know the, the runes that were there. It's kind of interesting. It would have been a role in any other case, but because you're a conjuration specialist, this isn't natural to you if you can fill it in. Okay. What are you filling it in with? Whatever it was supposed to be there initially. <laughs> no, but what, what substance are you using? Are you going to use some oh. of your ink? Um, I'll use... Might as well just use blood, because, I mean, it's worked before. I don't know if ink's going to fade. Okay. So I'll poke the non-gray hand okay. gently with a... I have a pocket knife in my inventory. All right. So, Look, Sackus has a sharp object, guys. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Did we hide all of those? <laughs> um, you get a look from Clark as he's kind of like, why are people stabbing themselves? But it doesn't seem to. It needs to be repaired, attention. don't worry. Uh, it needs to be repaired. It, take I'll explain. one point of damage okay. um, as you start to draw the blood. And then, presumably, I guess, with the other hand, with the gray hand, you'll start to trace out a pattern. Is Zackus left or right handed? Have you ever established that? He's probably ambidextrous. Okay. Or I'd say uh, left, just because if I ever cosplay them, it's easier, really, because okay. I'm left-handed. <laughs> so the right hand was the one that was gray. Yeah. The left hand was the one that was cut. Yeah. So are you taking your, your right hand then and, and awkwardly writing the symbols? No, I'll use it by your hand. Well, that's where the blood is. It's hard to get at the blood. <laughs> Wipes it on. But what if, he, like, what if he pricks his finger? Then it's like... Sure, okay. I mean, that's how I envision yeah. it. Uh, no problem. Okay. So you, 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 you kind of you kind of have to slice quite yeah. a bit to get enough ink to go, and then you end up kind of slicing a second and third finger yeah, or just like to squeeze get it a little bit or go like this. Yeah. Um, it kind of hurts. It's like a paper cut, which, yeah. which you should be immune to, mm -hmm. being someone in the library, but yet you're not. It's, it's the most annoying kind. Just grin and bear it. You trace and fill out the pattern. Now the pattern seems to be complete with this fresher blood on one side already starting to seep somewhat into the stone. But now you realize that it has to be powered. We need devices to power this object. What did, you, what did you retrieve from the troll's lair? Is there anything that would fit in these little slots? And I'll point no. out those slots. Are you going to go through this stuff or just... I, the only stuff that I brought with go. us that was uh, coins, two silver daggers, and the ring. Shadow coins. Would shadow coins do it? You can try. All right. So who's got the most shadow coins? I, I have none. I have all of them. Okay. <laughs> Place one in there, see what happens. And try not to get it stuck in case it doesn't work. Oh. Can you guys hurry up? I'm going to put my hand it's in the symbol and, try and uh, expend a spell slot. If it wants power, it's probably magical power. Okay. Eight more piercing damage, followed by seven more piercing damage. Cool. Uh, they have now made it in about uh, about 10 feet or 15 feet from the edge, mm -hmm. and they're starting to move faster and faster. Um, what's, what spell are you doing and where? I'm at half my hit points, yo. I'm not doing a spell. I'm giving it magical energy. Um, if you were a sorcerer, that would make more sense for raw magic, but you're... What is your casting class? Bard. Bard. I mean, any caster has to take their magical energy and... 
do something with it. I'm but just it, trying to go. Uh, yeah, okay, it is ritualized in most cases, but I'll say the bard has enough flexibility to be able to do that. I will have an arcana roll to try to make this weird expression of magic. Eleven. Eleven? Um, I'll say that's sufficient. So what level spell slot do you expend? Three. It's the only one I had left. Okay. Um, and in what particular place are you expending that? Because there's there's ten spots there. One which, as you know, is meant to represent external magic. Whichever then, one he pointed at. Okay. Which one did you point at? Just for for because I'm at a start. I'll just say the conjuration one because that's the one I was next to. Okay. Um, as Kazima extends their hand and releases the magical energy, wildly fluctu fluctuating out of uh, any particular spell, there's nothing holding it and binding it to a particular shape and, and uh, method. Uh, it pushes inward towards the spot where the, the gap is and seems to dissipate, and little tendrils of energy flicker along the lines for conjuration. The whole thing seems to glow somewhat. Okay. Any kind of magic can fuel that. You have no idea. Right. So I'll at this try point, and... in this point, magic, just direct magical energy may work. And, and yeah. you, you said that it responded, that it did you say out loud that it represents each of the? Not yet. Okay. But I'm assuming that. Well, I think it didn't seem to work well enough, so I'll jam a coin in it, like you suggested. Jam a coin in the other one. Okay, which other one? The one next to it. <laughs> okay, make a d10 roll. Five. Okay. Um, you take the, the coin and kind of press it up against the rock where the gap is. It does seem to fit within the gap that's there. And as you press it, you hold it for a few seconds as it feels like it's going to fall away. And then pulling your finger back, you see it hold on. Um, the black coin turns to smoke. And that smoke blasts out in fire. Make a dexterity saving okay. throw. Twelve. Twelve, you usually sort of step back a little bit as the the evocation magic uh, expresses itself Whoa, very quickly. That was not supposed to happen. Uh, so I'll try casting a magic missile, yeah. and you know how. Oops. Uh, does it seem to have lit up any more? Yes, sorry, you're right. It, there okay. is that flash of energy, and then that section seems to be lit up. Okay, so that's two out of nine. Okay, two out of ten. Right. Okay, four coins. This seems to work, so let's do it. All right, and yeah, he has a I'll place as well. <laughs> Let me try something first. I'll tr I'll cast the magic. Ma er. Is this rock? Can I tell if it's immune to like taking damage, or if I were to cast the magic missile and divide the three bolts to go in each in the slot? No idea. It's last the test of time, so it's probably strong. It seems to be maybe even a magical artifact of yeah. its own, but everything can be destroyed with enough power. Yeah. But having cast magic missiles several several times in the past, can I tell like if it's gonna mess up the runes if I aim? Make them? an Arcana check. Nineteen plus fourteen to thirty-three. Looking at this, um, Emerald was was brilliant, or is brilliant, I should yeah. say, um, and he would not accept a simple solution to his problem. So very likely, using the same magics over and over again won't work. So if you split the magic missile up, that's effectively using the same magic three times. Okay. So you could try it, but you you suspect that it probably wouldn't work for all three anyway, okay. or all as many as you cast. I'll cast the mage hand, cantrip, okay. and have it plug one of the holes. See what okay. Well, school of magic is can, is mage I hand. I believe it's conjuration. I can double check it. Actually, I have it here. Page end. Oh, yes. It doesn't say. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty it's, sure it's conjuration. Yeah, it should say just before the, the word cantrip usually, but... Yeah, it should on the card. Mm -hmm. Conjuration. Yep, conjuration cantrip. Okay. And which one, are you aiming at? Hmm? which one are you aiming at? If it's just one random or whole random again. And the conjuration one's already lit up, right? Yes. yes. You touched it. And there's no other conjuration one, I'm assuming. No. Seems like one per. Okay, I'll try whatever the unassigned one is, see what happens. See, I okay. have an idea, but you haven't said anything about schools of magic, so... 
Uh, you cast the the cantrip at the the un, unassigned one, mm -hmm. and the energy uh, the, the the hand kind of goes and plunks onto that spot. Nothing happens. Do I know if he's used conjuration as he like used a spell slot though? When he felt um, I didn't use any. He didn't use a spell slot, okay. or he didn't use a specific type of magic. But it worked for the conjuration roll. Seemed to. Okay. Well, while he's doing that, I'm sticking coins in holes. Okay. Um, roll a d10. Two. Two. That one's already used. Roll again. Uh -huh. Let's roll a d8. That's cock. Seven. Uh, that actually is where uh, he had attempted to use the hand, and you kind of quickly jam a coin right through the hand, which is still present. Uh, this time, cautious and wary to step back, as the coin itself seems to evaporate, lets out a scream, an agonizing scream, as whatever was in the coin is sort of semi-released, and then that section is lit up. That section seems to weirdly interweave with all of the other types of magic. This one represents conjuration, and the other ones represent each school of magic. What, whatever, whatever one you, put, you just put a coin in represents some unknown kind of magic. So the, the coin seems to work. Mm hmm. If That's why have... I gave you four. Start plugging them in holes. We've got like two minutes. <laughs> okay. We'll just plug. Uh... I'm not worrying about safety, I'm just worrying about speed. I run over, I jam one in until it takes. Why not try casting spells of that school of magic in the. Because mm. <laughs> I don't have any spells left, and he probably doesn't have all the magics. I have conjuration, but this one seems to be the conjuration one, and that was avocation. Yes, yeah, one of them was. Yeah. Yes, there's a coin in, in them already. Okay, so you have four more coins you you inject. Um. Okay, I'm just going to go through them in order here. So the first one, uh, representing abjuration, make a wisdom saving throw. Me? Yeah. Okay. You're using the coin. Sixteen. Plus two, so eighteen. Okay, uh, as you you stick it in, um, you do kind of uh, dodge, essentially with your mind, as something of befuddlement comes straight out, an effect comes straight out, and you kind of catch it on the edge of your mind. Um, standing right beside him, Kuzima, you notice that the gray uh, gray blue eye and his normal eye do not move in parallel. They actually move That's separately. <laughs> the gray eye watching this this thing go by, and the other one watching the stone. You don't notice this effect, um, but it does seem to, to, to take and does seem to load up that section. Uh, next one, um, make a, oh, um, I've got to light up my own th side here now. Uh, this would be uh, in uh, Charisma Saving Throw. Oh boy. All right, we can do this, we got this. Two. Two? Okay, is you place the, the coin in and it takes a moment and in a weird sense you're caught as you now think of this moment and you think of the next moment when you've already inserted the next coin and you think of the previous moment where you were befuddled and you speak out loud in your loudest voice. What is Zacchaeus's deepest secret? Well, that goes back a long way. <laughs> like the first one that comes to mind? Or? Sure. Deepest secret that comes to mind. That was totally me who summoned the demon back in like the to help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back in the town. Thing. Okay. Uh -huh. yep. Those in are the, stops. Uh, in the uh, the uh, wither withergate, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As uh, Zacchaeus kind of puts the coin out, and before you realize, you actually clamp your hand on your mouth, but you've already spoken this weird thing, and the effect kind of passes. But it's in her asses. Eldar is glaring at you, and now. No longer dashing around. Do I notice? Just I, doing one. Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's kind of looking around, making sure no one notices, and there's a fiery thing sitting still. Clark just sort of shrugs and starts going over, <laughs> trying to cut away at some of these things. <laughs> Instead of dashing, I'm now later. just doing my regular movement. Okay. Uh, it's definitely making inroads now where you're not, uh, not dashing nearly as fast. Um, next one. Uh, next one. Do, do, do. Okay. Uh, this one is an intelligence saving throw. I got this. 13 plus 6, so 19. Okay. You feel a compulsion pass over your mind, but you shake it off as some external force as it tried to enchant you. 
Actually, you would have had advantage on that anyway. Okay. Uh, and the fourth one, uh, this one is another intelligence saving throw. Seven plus six. So, so 13. 13. Uh, as you look around, do you realize that the the uh, barrier of the thorns has overtaken uh, Clark, has overtaken the fire, which you can see briefly between it, and is now bearing down on you? Uh-oh. Put them in faster. Our friends are dead. There are two more spots remaining. Mm -hmm. I, th I thought you had some. Oh, yeah, I've been putting mine in, too. Oh, you're putting them as okay. well. I thought you yeah. handed the coins you had to him. Okay. No, I gave him four coins. Okay. Because there were eight left. So this is going a little faster then. Uh, well, then, in, in parallel with this, then, uh, I will have you make a wisdom saving throw. Eleven. Eleven. Um, as you press the coin in, the coin suddenly jerks deeper inward, and your whole hand seems to go with it. You rapidly pull out your hand as you can feel other hands on the other side grabbing on with with uh, pencil-thin, non-fleshed fingers, and you rapidly pull your hand out of that and see just the tips of skeletal fingers on the outside. That was necromancy. Hmm. And the final one. Which is a uh, what? I um, fail it, but uh, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was thinking about that. It's dexterity saving throw in this case. Well, that's an 11 also. That's an 11. Uh, as you pull your, your, as you kind of press the thing there and, and hold on to it, um, you see fur cropping up along the back of your fingers and then up your arm and then it rapidly crosses across your body as you drop down to all fours and you now see a wolf standing where Kazima was. Uh, hey, I'm bigger. Ruff, 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 ruff. Crackle, as the last crackle, one of crackle, these, crackle. as the last one of these <laughs> spreads its power across, the whole thing you lights up <laughs> for a moment or two. You can see now that uh, it's only inches away from catching up to you. The, the whole barrier around you has practically overcome. You can no longer see uh, her. Clark is lost in the, in the weeds as the whole thing uh, brightly lights up through all these different uh, spots, each one of them illuminating outward until the whole thing kind of turns and twists and rises about 10 feet up. Okay. And as it rises, you can see the outline of a door. Um, what a stone uh, door placed in it looks like heavy hinges made of stone as well. I'll try to open it and it's like, hey, help me push this. Elzara, are you still alive? <laughs> strength saving throw. Actually, sorry, strength roll. Uh, athletics if you have it. Can you see the hinges on the door? Yes. Okay. It's a bowl. Fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the I door is understand. extraordinarily heavy, and as you grasp onto its big stone hand handle, it's not really moving on its own. So is that just, like, in his mind? That... Uh, you can see also that the stone has risen. Okay. But he's also calling out that his friends are all dead and frantically scrap it, scratching away at this. You do see a wolf standing beside him, however. But I, I would have seen... Uh... Yeah, with your perception, yeah, <laughs> there, there'd be a, there'd be kind of a strange howling, and you look over where Kuzima was, and yeah. there's a Kuzima uh, colored wolf. How's Clark looking? Is Clark is, is fighting hard, but it's starting to overwhelm him. Okay. Um, he doesn't seem to be as perturbed as one might expect, but he also steps back a little bit and swings out with the side as it sw locks into position, cutting off a large swath. I'm gonna go beside Clark and point that there's a door. <laughs> Um, he looks at the, the fury finger <laughs> and runs over. Uh, you hear a troll rushing through the, uh, the uh, brambles straight at you. Pull on the door harder. <laughs> okay, make another strength check. It's cut. Nat 20. Nat 20. Okay. <laughs> as, as the door scrapes open, uh, outward comes a, a very musty, uh, dusty smell. Blackness within, and you open the door up and... Charge in? Yeah. Okay. There's a fucking troll coming, uh, and my friends are dead, and there's forest. Uh, and what is the dryad up to? Uh, you haven't seen her for a while. Um, you I'm, know that she tended to hide inside the brambles themselves. I'm going to... I can't talk to her. Shit. Um, I'm still going to say... Uh, which one do we have with us? Uh, Radix. Radix? Uh... Radix, doors open, get in. 
and like flail and go like this. Uh, you heard one troll call to another. Okay. There's two now that oh, are getting. Right, let's, let's go faster. So let's... you dive in, dive into the hole. Yeah. I go Make like a dexterity saving throw as you dive into the darkness. Four. Four. Plus, so five total. I'm pretty sure that's a fail. You take three points of bludgeoning damage as you start to tumble down the stairs. I, so I'm going like this and going towards the door. Uh, Clark is is barreling through. Uh, Kuzima, are you stepping through or are you waiting? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you step through. Uh, the, the wolf's four feet giving you strangely a little bit more balance uh, as the stairs immediately start going downward. There are they are, they are narrow stone steps that are immediately curving. From right behind you, your clark come in uh, and the whole thing seems to shudder a little bit as though it's about to descend. There's trolls, you guys! One of them is standing right behind you, looming over you, taking up all the light out of the room. How narrow is the hallway? About uh, four and a half feet wide. Is it, it, can, a troll, can, can a troll fit in that? It seems Apparently. to be doing it somehow. Oh shit! It's it's filling the entire wall as it comes towards you. It's, go it's sucking in that guy. Get up and go faster. <laughs> okay, you start barreling down the stairs, yeah. uh, uh, blindly in the dark. Thankfully, the curve of the wall actually serves you well as you kind of bounce off of it going around. I get into the doorway. Okay. Uh, turn back into myself, and say, "Radix, get in here." Okay. Um. Yeah, there's three trolls. You see her running now, uh, kind of emerging out of the barrier of it, uh, and almost as though suddenly it can now see her. Because remember, it didn't react to her as she moved through. Yeah. As she moves towards the edge, it seems to reach out and attempt to grab her. No. That one's cocked. Oof. I think she got lucky. She did get lucky. As you see them kind of swirling around and grabbing onto an ankle, she kind of does a, a forward flip to roll out of it, uh, running towards the, the area. Her speed is... Now increased by 10 feet. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, as she sort of seems to almost uh, take larger steps. Leap, leap. Now you can feel the whole thing starting to shudder and turn. The door is starting to close back. And we'll give her a chance to make a dexterity saving throw to get in. Uh, she is good with dex. And that is enough. As she dives inward, as the door kind of catches her a little bit on the foot, almost pushing her in the door. I, I'm like... <laughs> uh, the whole thing starts to descend. It is utterly black inside. No light whatsoever. Not uh, not even the small amount of light that, that the folks with, uh, with dark vision can see by. You're blindly running down, uh, and you just hear the echo of these things kind of moving behind you. Are they moving make a, behind me? Make a, an intelligent saving throw. 16? 16. Uh, as you hear Clara's concerned voice uh, yelling down at you, where the hell are you going? There's troll. Are, are there and then still you trolls? kind of stop hearing the sounds of the trolls struggling to fit through. Uh, I'm The trolls didn't make it through, did they? Trolls? Yeah, they were like right on. They were right after me. The only thing after you is a wolf. Oh, that's Where's Kazima, anyway? He's the wolf. <laughs> I, I can't speak to him right now, but Elzara should be able to. And that's probably the extent of which Jody's going to be spoken of by, or Clark's going to be spoken of by me. But I'll you have made the, it inside. I'll turn on the drift globe. And you can all feel the shifting and shimmering as the as the entire thing seems to settle I, back I downward. Like, hold on, hold on. Um, as you do, and you're holding onto the wall, you actually can feel like the walls themselves are extending a little bit as it goes down. It's not just moving up and down. It seems like it's actually, you're sorry, shrinking a little bit as it goes down. The whole thing seems to have elongated to fit up out of the hole. And now shrinking back down to its normal size. It's weird. This place is weird. This mm-hmm. place is fucked up. This place is weird. As you're moving around, you kind of it's sense really an, an opening on on the opposite side from you, um, and you reach a little bit of a plateau. I, having realized that Zacchaeus has just blindly run into a place, uh, I am going to take a torch out of my bag of holding and light okay. it with druid craft. I do have a drift globe. Like yeah, so you realizing like, that you've just blindly run into a place. Oh, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I am providing my own light. Uh, Clark thanks you. Um, I believe wolves have blind, or no, they don't no. have blind sight, but they do have dark sight. No, but the, I don't think so. Nope. Okay. I think they only then have been, advantage. It's been entirely black for you for the while then. Yeah. They, um, they only have advantage on smell. True, true. Actually, yeah, Smelling you, you pull in a, a whiff mm-hmm. of this air of sort of ancient, stale, dusty air. Extraordinarily dry. Does it smell like a library? Um, no, no. The library has that sort of woodsy smell from the paper and from the leather being used. This smells more like a tomb. 
<laughs> dry and dusty and, and lifeless. As a note, I actually probably do have dark vision in this mode because my class gives me dark vision if I don't have it. Oh, right, because the Gloomstalker. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Um, it didn't help until the, the, the there was some light provided, though. In, in complete pitch black, it's still still black. You're still a disadvantage. So, And you have keen sense on hearing and smell. But as the drift globe ahead pack. lights up, and as the, the torch goes up, um, all of you now can sort of make out a little bit of your surroundings. The walls seem to be made of pure stone. There's no sign of mortar, there's no sign of brick, there's no sign of anything of a constructed nature. It seems to have been molded stone, uh, worked over a long time. Ceilings about 10 feet and descending in a sort of a corkscrew pattern. On the inner wall, something you wouldn't have not have noticed because you were already down the bottom by the time you, you, this light came on, but you notice as you light up the torch, there are scratch marks on the inside, um, line after line of just simple scratch marks, simple little lines in rows. Does it look like it's like counting? Or Kinda, yeah, yeah. And if you sort of sit back and go, how many of them are, and they seem to extend all the way down to the bottom, hundreds? Someone might be stuck in here. Do we get to hear that? Uh, you do hear her voice echoing down the, the hallway. Presumably all of you are coming down the stairs. You've lit up the drip, drift globe, though, and can see on the interior portion of this, so you were on an exterior ring, the interior portion seems to be a semicircular room. This room seems to be, um, in some ways, not unlike the hut you had in Withergate. Um, a simple stone slab set up as a sort of bed, but slightly, slightly tilted, and you can actually make out a bit of a worn groove in it where a body would lie. It's about seven feet long, made for a large person. A small uh, table, also made from stone, sits there. Um, you see uh, utensils and buckets and different things made also of stone, almost purely. Um, make a perception check. 16 plus... 18 total? 18. You see a small gem glint in the light, kind of right by the bottom of the table. Uh, it's a small sapphire, about just about the size, a little larger than your thumbnail. Um, probably not worth much on the open market, like a 10 gold maybe. And also, you see a small scrap of paper. I'll go towards the gem. And paper usually has things, interesting things written on them, so I'll just grab a piece of paper. Okay, let's grab a piece of paper. Just one. I'm, try, I'm just making sure it's only one. Okay. And in the handwriting, which is spidery and sometimes uh, uh, crabbed, you see that. As the rest of you come around, you see that uh, Zacchaeus is kind of kneeling down by something and looking at something, by this, this sort of bedroom almost shaped space. Death is a luxury I cannot afford. Do I recognize the handwriting? It seems to be familiar. It's distorted and awkward. But you would swear that it's probably Imrol's handwriting. But it's almost as though it's been badly written. Okay. Which could mean it's someone trying to look like this handwriting. Or something else. It almost looks like Imrol's handwriting. I don't know how handwriting or even ink distorts over time in this dimension. There's a loud crack as the stone itself seems to have settled into place. And then what you hear, and probably what you hear as well, just mm -hmm. the very faint edges of hearing is the sound of thousands of thorns scrabbling up around the edges of the cup. Well, we're stuck in here now. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've got a 21 passive perception now for smelling and hearing. <laughs> yeah, both of you definitely hear that. 21 and, and a 22, And have yo. a good understanding of what that what that means. Death is a luxury. Why would it be a luxury? And Zacchaeus is muttering to himself around the stairs, around the, the room in the center. I walk around and sniff things. I'll pick up the small sapphire, see what... Okay. It looks like a small sapphire. It's not a perfectly formed gem. Uh, it looks as though it's more of a shard of a sapphire. Ooh, I could make a 
a nice arrow with that. Make a perception check with advantage if you have that smelling. That gives you advantage, I believe? Yeah. Smelling, yes. Yeah. Keen smell. Um, do you need the stats of the wolf? Nah, probably not. Uh, 17 plus... Well, I don't know whether it's my perception or the wolf's perception. I think mental stuff is mine. Yeah, the physical it, stuff would be it. If it is, like, wild shape, if it's, like, polymorph, then no, it's the animals. It's more. It's the animals. Uh, then it would be a plus four to wisdom with a plus eight to perception. Okay. Hey. In that case, my perception right now passes actually a 23 <laughs> for hearing and sight. <laughs> uh, hearing and smell. Uh, so 25. Okay. Aside from your companions, whom you've never really noticed how distinctive each of them really smells. Um, it's always a, weird. It, it, it's always weird. <laughs> uh, but there is a, 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 a small amount of brimstone, in fact, that you smell coming from Clark's direction. Oh, shoot, never, really never mind. Before. That's through as a wild shaped thing for me. And you can probably smell that Zach just hasn't showered. Either way, I rolled a yeah. 17. Uh, <laughs> Zachus, you can actually smell the distinct smell of blood still on his hand, which was still the scabbed over now, or the finger is actually scabbed over now, but that, that is a very distinct smell. I'm probably is sniffing his butt. The right note now. written in blood? Um, it does not appear to be. It okay. appears to be ink, but it's faded and kind of tattered. It looks like it was part of a larger something or other. Okay. Um, in the room itself, you can smell decay. You can smell in the pots, there's small amounts of residue. One of them has something very, very sweet. It's invisible, there's nothing left of it physically, but there's sort of the residue on the inside of the pot. Uh, in another, there's something very, very uh, uh, bitter and very strong. Um, and you can see the inside of the spot, the pot has itself been, been uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, stained with it. And in the third, the third pot, um, and as you kind of nuzzle around, you, you kind of turn the pot over and there's a, a stylus, essentially a pencil made out of, out of rock that's been thinly carved. And actually it looks exquisite in the way that it's been done, as if a lot of time was taken to make this. Um, you do smell, once again, the very faint and dusty smell of blood inside that small pot. Mm. Three is the perception. I'll go to where the wolf is, and I'll just keep the shard. Is anybody going to talk about the wolf? That'll be my last attempt at Clark. Yeah, that's uh, Kuzima. Uh, when we yeah. were putting coins, I, I hope we're not broke, by the way. But anyway, that'll be a problem for later. We have bigger problems now. Uh, we were putting coins in the slots. It There was one slot for each type of magic, and it seems that there was a trap of each type of magic in the slots. I stopped sniffing his butt, and I go sniff Clark's butt. Stop that. And Clark's kind of looking around. I'm is a wolf it, now. Is he going to stay that way? I I doubt it. Elzero would know more. I haven't had the chance to uh, look at what kind of magics are in effect. Although, what? I'll go stand over there. And he kind of walks towards the edge. And you can see that be, as the room continues, there's further stairs going down. Was um, But uh, what uh, magic type was it that transformed it into a wolf? Was it transmutation? Transmutation, okay. yeah. It's transformation magic, magic, so I, I don't think it's going to last forever. I'll just stare into the darkness. It's making a little more sense. I go sit by Clark. <laughs> Clark kind of reaches down and pats your head and then thinks twice about it and then does it anyway. This would make a wonderful magical arrow, but we might need it for something. It was next to this piece of paper, which seems to be a greater part of something else. There may be clues. Later. So what does it say? Death is a luxury. Death is a luxury I cannot afford. And I'll show it a piece of paper. Interesting. I don't kind know. Of, you kind of recognize the handwriting. You haven't seen it as much, um, but you've seen it kind of on official documents and things like that. And again, the same sort of weird feeling that it's distorted somehow. Mm -hmm. It doesn't quite look right. I don't know. There were like tally marks all the way up the stairs. Tally marks? Like some I'm counting the days, days or something. Or years. Huh. It's strange that I didn't notice those. You don't notice a lot of things. Strange also that I was running down so quickly. Normally I'm more cautious. Do I realize like, no. what affected my mind when I was running down <laughs> at like... I was thinking back on it, the troll should never fit through that doorway. No, no. And the fact that the troll was not only in the door but filling the entire hallway. Yeah, there was some sort of, uh, some sort of illusion that only you could see. Yeah, I believe there was uh, one of the 
traps sprung. Thinking on it, it it's, it's likely that because Emerald created that, he probably also booby-trapped it just to make sure that anybody who figured it out was still in danger because they mm -hmm. didn't know that part. So uh, that's something else to keep in mind if Emerald likes to booby-trap his locations. Uh, there may be more traps in this. No doubt. Whatever it is. Um, um, I kind of would like a short rest, personally, if we can like secure this room. It seems fairly secure. It seems nothing's gotten into here for... There's years. tally marks. There's more stairs downward, says Clark. But I think it's an easy place to hold if we needed it. Yes. I would like to go inspect those tally marks. So I'm Do just going to go, like, count them real quick. Okay. Can I figure out... Uh, uh, as you go back around the corner, you see what she was talking about in the drift globe slowly catching up to you. Can I figure out if there are weeks, months, or days? There's no indication of any kind of minute whatsoever. But as you go through, it, it How many very much marks can feels, you fit on like, this brick? feels like the, the, they're, they're both deliberate and marking something off. Um, make a perception check as you go through. 10 plus 2, so 12. 12. Um, you're not sure how many there are. If to, to actually count them would take quite a while, and the, as they are all the way around the curving hallway. Hundreds is probably an easy guess. The other thing you kind of looking through, you do notice that some of them are more ragged than others. Some of them are long and, and jagged. Some of them are, are, are curved. Others seem to be very deliberate, especially towards the beginning. They seem very deliberate and very carefully done. They get a bit more ragged towards the middle, and the last few seem to be also very deliberate. Is it kind of like a code could be hidden in that? You can sit and ponder that for a while if you want. Would that count as a short rest or no? It could be something done during a short rest, yeah. Okay. If we're all stopping for a short rest, I'll do that. Okay. And a note to the DM, is the number six here like... That's not significant. Originally I was going to have you roll to do them, then I realized, no, I can just throw these in a hat. Okay. Um, it's much more fun that way. Okay. Plus I get to show Traps. up in a hat. Yeah. <laughs> for those who might not have seen, because it was off camera at the time, this is a delightful top hat that I've had for years, nice. into which I've placed several little pieces of paper. So we'll see how those progress over time. Ooh. So you're taking a short rest then? Uh, I would like one. I would um, like you as well. Okay. So relaxing for, for an hour. Clark uh, sort of sets himself up and kind of... You notice that, that Clark kind of falls into a very practiced routine. Clark was a soldier for a long time. He actually had to do guarding of, of camps and things. Mm -hmm. Kind of wedges himself against the wall appropriately so that he's both resting and alert at the same time. Um, so all of you can take a short rest. Yep. Just like half my level for the spell slots, right? In terms of what I get back. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Um, as the the hour goes on, you spend some time sort of contemplating these these scratch marks that indicate some sort of code. Is there anything in particular you're doing yeah, while yeah. you're re resting, or just kind of no, taking it easy? I'm gonna lie talk down with Radix a little bit. Yeah, okay. Uh, Radix is is kind of shivering, uh, and Not you can kind of see that she feels. Yeah. She feels nervous here. Um, Same feeling as I felt the first time I went into the Temple of Namazani. To a certain degree, yeah. S yeah. Similar vibe. Similar vibe, and, and also, um, she actually whispers to you, there's nothing natural here. I know. And that's the thing that seems to scare her the most, is there's nothing but stone around you. Not even a, a, a root or anything. I know. It's not my preference either but I didn't want you to be left alone out there either. I wouldn't want to be alone. We'll make sure you get back. I'll make sure you get to where you need to be. I hope. If I can. The hour passes uneventfully. There's nothing that uh, Clark notices during the hour. Uh, towards the latter part of the hour... Um, I'm just going to make a note for him to roll some HP. Because I'm a... Um, you discover yourself sitting upon the ground in a kind of an awkward squatting mm -hmm. position as the as the transformation seems to fade from you, as does the overwhelming um, dryness of the air and the the uh, <laughs> we've replaced Clark with a sticky note. Uh, <laughs> he as doesn't well as know the, the so that we know to let him roll some HP. <laughs> overwhelming sensations that you weren't used to, as well as this weird feeling of hair. Mm. That was strange. 
Yeah. He were sniffing people's butts quite a bit. Like, Welcome I'm, I'm to not, the I'm land of polymorph. Hmm? Welcome to the land of polymorph. Yeah. Uh, at least you ended up as a wolf and not a T-Rex. That would have not been fun. Mm. Unless you intend that. Then it's hilarious. Been there, done that. It was fun. So, how are we getting home now? Oh, we seem to be stuck underground. Arms. Right. Uh, make a uh, make an inside check. Not twenty. Nice, nice. As you look along these, there does not seem to be a direct pattern. It's not a code of any kind. Um, but as you noted before, where some of them were longer and more ragged, some of them were were clearer. Um, they're marking off something. Some occasion, some returning or, or, or something going here. You're not quite sure exactly what they are. Um, but the fact that some of them are more ragged than others indicates that the person who made them or the thing that made them was probably more hurt or more disturbed when trying to do those ones, recovered, and then in the end seemed to have recovered entirely. But there are hundreds of these. And do the last ones look recent? There's no way to tell. They all look old. The only thing you can really say is the ones at the at the end are probably less old than the ones at the beginning. But there's an ageless quality to this whole place that makes it difficult to really determine that. Yeah. Looking at the markings, uh, it seems like whoever made them had some kind of a let's just say issues, craziness when they were making their jagged ones and then they seem to have recovered so if if whoever made them is not Emerald and is still here then chances are they'd be open to just not being violent and talking with us and helping us escape, hopefully or they've spent all of their time trapped here doing pull-ups and will chop your hand off if you try to Clark well, they seem, with the idea like, they're, they're, they seem like they're able to count. Support. If they're able to write notes, then... Mm. Clark! <laughs> wasn't there a godling or something keeping people out of here after Emerald left? These markings would be Emeralds. There's nobody here. Unless he left someone on the inside to guard it. Or to imprison them here. It seemed like if anybody was imprisoned, it was Finn. Which we've uh, allowed to escape, so surely if somebody's in prison here and we can help them escape, that they would be all open to, well, not killing us for one. Sure. You think that. Well, I'd like to be honest. I take out my, um, my scimitar. <laughs> I go over and look at Clark and walk down the stairs. Okay. Clark just sort of shrugs as well also. and continues on. The stairs are narrow. It really uh, is going to be one of you at a time. Like I said, only about four and a half feet wide and kind of curving uh, continuously. Um, the only one who potentially could walk beside someone would be Kazima, just because you're that small. Uh -huh. um, but for the rest of you, it's and especially Clark with the weapon that he's got, even if he tries to... Uh, uh, turn the blade so it's a certain way he's still having a little bit of difficulty with that so in fact puts that weapon away and draws his sax out I can presume that Clark would do something like that yes mm -hmm. Jody um, Jody can retcon any of this when he gets there as you move mm -hmm. down into the second the second layer and you now with lights proceed along you actually notice a second set of tally marks on the on the lower set these ones are smaller whereas the other ones would have been a couple of inches long. These ones seem to be half the size, and they don't extend up beyond about three feet. Are they all, like, made uh, with, with sanity, kind of? Like, not jagged and crooked? Uh, looking at them, they, there's a lot more primitiveness to all of them. Good. None of them are super straight. Um, you can almost get the impression that they were, they were made, but not with as much caring as the other ones were. Okay. Proceed downward. 
Um, can I, for shits and giggles, do something? Absolutely. You try. Can I try to startle Zacchaeus? <laughs> you try to? Um, so, presumably, are you going to be going after Zacchaeus, then? Yeah. I, I, I would be in the, in the back anyway. Okay. Um, I'm just looking at the wall. How are you How are you going to try to do this? I just want to try to sneak up on, on him. Okay. And make a big noise behind him. Um, make, a, make a stealth check, and you make a perception check. 20. Or 21. 21. <laughs> you know what? I have an inspiration that I am going to use <laughs> on this. <laughs> okay. Because silliness. Sure. The purple dice. Uh, actually, no. That's rolling good. <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay. That's a four. It's a four. Uh, as you kind of get a little bit of the giggle fits, thinking of what's going to happen, <laughs> uh, you're kind of noticing uh, Elzara has tried to sort of slink back against the wall and sneak up to you. She's forgotten she's holding a torch, however, uh, and is fully visible holding onto the torch, and looks like she's about to reach out towards you. And Zaka's just. Could, could you stop the, the, the shadow, the dancing shadows on the lines are making them hard to see? Please. I glare at you and just go. And continue to go like this. <laughs> anyway. If I wasn't pledged to get you children home, I'd leave you right now. They seem to not be made. The marks, they're not made with as much care as the ones above. Aside from the giant ones above. Yeah. You get what? bored making lines after a while. I figured since they were all slightly different, maybe it could have been a code. If, in some if someone, <laughs> as someone who has spent a lot of time alone, someplace that I wanted to be, mm -hmm. this is not something I would do if I wanted to be somewhere. If it is something you want to do, this is not something that I would do if I want if I put myself somewhere. Yes, I suppose. But wait, there's there's no way to track time in this realm. What were they tracking? Comings and goings. Can I, like, try to figure out what the hell they were tracking if they're not tracking time? Now that I've clued in that it's like, hey, wait a second, they're not tracking time. You've got an idea they're tracking something, but there's not particularly much information to go on at the moment. Okay. Um... The suggestion that Kazima makes about comings and goings is a reasonable one. Without more evidence, I'll say that it's, it's, it's too hard yet to make a guess out of the blue. But you feel like you're onto something. I'm still convinced that it's someone who's trapped here. Sure enough. I spent a lot of time alone. It's true. If, if you seclude yourself, you're not going to, like, tally the days. They should be delighted to see us then. No. We got in here. Oh, yes. Where would the person who put him in? Or is Emerald here willingly? The guardian is no longer inside. They yeah, they don't know that. Or is Emerald in this world willingly? I don't know. It's not something I could just ask him outright, but... Hopefully it's something I can ask him Out of character, I'm pretty sure he has told you that he was stuck there and trying to get away. Yeah, but was he telling the truth? <laughs> Or did he, like, initially come here willingly and then something went, like, horribly wrong and then he ended up locking mm. himself? Possibly, like, what if he locked himself in? Who had the vision of the dryads? Okay. So there's more information that Kazama has, perhaps. As you continue down, the second floor is very similar to the first floor. Um, there's an opening in the middle, in the center. Mm -hmm. This time, a smaller block of stone is placed as a sort of bed. Um, it looks less warm than the one above. There is no um, no uh, uh, assortment of, of of vessels, no assortment of, of, of pots or anything in this particular space. Um, but there are a number of discarded, broken, uh, long uh, uh, stone tools. Again, sort of look like they were elegantly crafted. Many of them broken, probably from use. They have sharp uh, ends. Some of them have hooks on them. Some of them seem to have uh, uh, almost needle-like appendages, which definitely broke off at some point. Um, others seem to have uh, a, a bit of a hinge to them, where there may have been something that bound two of them together through the holes at the top to hold something together. I'll go look at those. And do I see any other gems or pieces of paper by any chance? Uh, make an investigation check. Ooh. You look around. 15 plus... I, forget. I think I have enough investigation. 
Oh, ten, plus ten. Okay, so twenty-five. Twenty-five. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, just for detective detective Zachis. Just for visuals for those at the table, this is what a typical floor is shaped like. Okay. With the stairs kind of going halfway exactly. down. The longer set is intended to be the ones that are kind of above, and the smaller set is going down. Okay. With a, an opening in the middle. I'm going to move this die. Yeah, we probably don't need the die. Yeah, see. you can definitely move the d12. We don't need that anymore. And I won't put the map overhead, but we'll get to that probably at some point, folks, for a few at home. Um, I want to take the battery out of the Ooh, okay. elemental to yeah. save it. Um, as you look around, uh, you find a, a couple of uh, pieces of stone. Um, that have uh, scrabbled onto them. Again, a familiar, um, familiar kind of handwriting. No sign of gems. So you get two. I get two of them. You get two of them. Okay, here's one. Oh. I just want to make sure I'm not like grabbing more than one in a handful. Okay. So it's just like a stone tablet or something, or a stone... It looks like, uh, in the absence of paper, there's a bit of broken stone there that was that was uh, inscribed upon. Um, probably with something like the tool you saw upstairs, um, but instead of a, a point to hold liquid in, it was a point to direct a certain amount of control over stone. Very fine work that would have taken quite a considerable amount of time. These are writing instruments. There's something on this stone. Mm -hmm. There was a pen up in the previous place. Really? Did, did you pick it up? No. Damn it. I was a wolf. Yes, I suppose. You could have held it on, held on to it with your mouth. A anyway, I, I guess no, smelling people's right. butts was more important. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a dog thing. I was identifying you all. Hell's ever never done this, but anyway. That's because I have my brain. I, I want to see a fire elemental <laughs> sniffing people's butts now. It's <laughs> Blue Angels now. <laughs> but there's something written on this stone. And again, the stone is kind of broken up a little bit, so that's only the only legible part okay. on it. Repentance can only be achieved with action, not through thoughts or words. Sacrifice is necessary when your difficulties are cosmic. Cosmic. And what kind of sacrifice? Are there any more, like, writings anywhere else in this room? Not in this particular room, no. Okay. Um, and looking at the tools, it's hard to figure out exactly what they're for. They're not meant for writing of any kind. Um, make a medicine roll. 19. Okay. Plus um, 5, so 24. So you're kind of holding up these strange tools and, and kind of trying to figure out what they might do. And you kind of prick your finger a little bit on one of the one of the hooked edges of one of the stone tools. It's remarkably tough. Um, in fact, it's blackened on the end where it may have been forged almost rather than, than made. Um, and they seem to be sort of primitive medical tools. Placed here for some purpose. And I'll just relay that information to my companions. Do I take like one point of damage from pricking myself, or is it like not in this case? Cut? Okay. <laughs> uh, there's a little sliver of, of stone that's stuck in your finger, and you kind of have to dig it out and get it out. But otherwise, not so bad. It's like these are medical tools, but can I figure out like what kind of organism they'd be meant to? I mean, anything. Okay. <laughs> medical tools of this scale are weird. Mm -hmm. um, they're a little bit awkward in size. But otherwise, what do you guys make of this? Anyway, I'll carry them with know. me. Are they like awkward to carry? Or? They're made of stone and fairly large, so they're, they're a bit awkward to carry around. I just somebody. forgot I don't have them in the bag I'm holding. Right, because that's what we're currently holding a, uh, yeah. a pillar. Yeah. But I think you took everything out of it to kind of jam mm -hmm. it into the bag. So. I'm carrying everything I own. <laughs> so I'll just, if there's only, how many of them are there? There's about half a dozen. Some of them are hard to judge whether it's one piece or two piece, and some of them are broken in parts. So, um, I'm just going to leave these here for now, and okay. just keep just keep them in mind. Okay. Going to continue on downward. Mm -hmm. The next floor is quite a contrast. Whatever was in the center part of this particular floor seems to have been destroyed. All you see is rubble and broken stone. 
almost intentionally destroyed. It's easy to see that, where even nothing remains larger than a fist in terms of stone size. Most pieces are smaller. The dust is, is thick. There was signs that there were something built in here. A little bit of glinting happens, though, off of the globe and the fire of the torch as you travel on by. Who wants to take a look inside? I will. Okay, make an investigation check. That's good. Kind of set the torch down on the stone. There's nothing you can really burn. Or I can hold it. Or wait, we have the drift, the drift globe anyway. Ah, uh, it is a nine. Nine? Yeah. Okay. Only one pull from the magic hat. I want to pull from the magic hat. Uh, magic hat is awesome. As you scrape away and find a bit of uh, parchment. Do you want me to grab this one? Hmm? The seed is dangerous. It could undo all the protections we have established for the world. It would make the death of the god meaningless. We must take every, um, every effort to destroy or seal it. Are you re repeating that to all of us? Yeah. Okay. We can put all these together. Sure. As you find that kind of buried under a little bit of stone, um, you also find a small diamond. Uh, awkwardly shaped, not pure. Again, wouldn't be much to a jeweler, but it's awkward in this particular place. Um, on the edge of the diamond, almost as though it's a it's a, a mineral defect, mm -hmm. there's a bit of reddish brown around the point end of the diamond. That's weird. <coughs> what is this diamond? It'd be the equivalent of a fifty gold piece diamond if you were able to cut it down properly. What's what's wrong with it? I don't know. Look at that. I've not seen a diamond with that type of discoloration. No. I sniff it. Is it? <laughs> bit uh, of residual. Make, a, make a, uh, a perception check. 25. 25. Uh, as uh, Kuzima kind of moves up and... I'm probably going like, to... So I'm pretty sure what it, uh, what it is. It, it's, it's very dusty and dry, but there's the distinct uh, aftertaste of copper. Blood. Uh, it was bloods practically inside the stone at this point. I'll look at the, I'll how it got inside the stone. I don't know. I'll use. I'll look at the sapphire I picked up earlier. Does it have a similar uh, reddish brown discoloration anywhere? Um, it's hard to tell against the the color of it itself, but um, maybe a little bit of residue. Not much. Okay. Nothing like this one, and nothing inside the stone. This is sort of a thumbnail edge of one part. Okay. Maybe he was using these to prick himself to write messages, but there were also medical tools above which make pricking fairly easily. Do you think this seed is still here? Well, from, from that, I don't think it would be. It's either been destroyed or sealed. Maybe it's sealed here. Is there anything else in this room? Um, as you look around and kind of overturn, it looks like, again, this room was deliberately destroyed. There would have been something, probably a structure of some kind here, uh, just judging from some of, the, some of the carved angles of the bits of stone that you are finding, but it doesn't seem to fit back together. It's almost as though something deliberately had gone through and uh, uh, tried to obscure whatever had been built here. However, do make a perception check. Ten. Okay. There's something out of the corner of your eye, but there's nothing there when you look. Oh, it's, it's just... It's out of your, it was out of your right eye. Oh, oh. Incidentally. I thought I saw something, I saw, I thought I saw something new. I, I guess it's just you. Are you staying here? No, might as well go down one. Okay. You continue to descend. Room after room looking like this one. Destroyed, torn apart, um, invaded, almost. Uh, each of you can make an investigation check and a perception check. 
Clark is going to keep watch. So you'll see nothing. Perception. Nothing. Investigation. You said perception and investigation. Ooh. That's right. One's on both of those. Wow. Yeah. That is gross. You start to sneeze as you as you kind of step on one of the steps that is not quite even. That is... You take a sudden in, intake of breath through your, your nose and you start to sneeze rather violently. That is yucky. Perception. Twelve. So twelve perception. And what was your investigation? Twelve. Okay. And for you? I got a twenty-two perception and I rolled a natural twenty on investigation, so I have a twenty-eight. Somebody's rolling nice. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Out of three. I mean, wow. my perception was still a nine. <laughs> you will find uh, four bits of broken stone. You want to draw from the hat four oh. things? Sure. Uh, and there'll be a second thing that you notice as well. Ow. Please don't get a paper. No, I just got a sore shoulder. Ah, sorry about that. Didn't think of that part. That's uh, okay. I mean, you could have gone with your other arm. Uh, I can't reach very well that way. Sorry. One must pay the cost of progress. Pachero was an unworthy ally. I can only hope that his influence does not grow. That one should be subtitled, Amrin is correct. <laughs> That is a long one. I have come to believe that the fundaments of this realm are not matter as would be in the prime material plane. Instead, it is the essence of our being, the soul itself which creates this place and binds it together. I do not know the full implications of such a conclusion. However, it is both exciting and terrifying to imagine. I don't know what this means. Here you go. <laughs> Those words are a little long for uh, Kujima. So I guess we'll just reread it. Uh, and last one is, I took no pleasure in doing what I had to do. Better that a god die than the world be overrun by demons. I have had much time to think about this, and I am resolved. But while I know my motivations, I have come to doubt those of my co-conspirator. I believe her to have another reason for this, and one, uh, sorry, one I may, one I feel may condemn the world. Who's this co-conspirator? Now, I'll just bring those pieces of stone back to you guys, because okay. <laughs> you're the people who know stuff. So yeah, you've discovered a bunch of, of small stones within, within these four or five floors you've been going through um, that have had little bits and pieces on them. One of those is actually made of paper. Uh, the, the one of the conclusion that the, the is the unlike the prime material plane, this is not made of matter but of uh, mm. the essence. That one is actually the most clearly written as well, um, whereas the rest get increasingly more ragged. Any of those that are in the upper case are almost... Uh, hammered into the stone uh, in all caps as well um, and so you start to pick up on a lot of these things the thing you otherwise notice is the wall in the bottom most floor is deformed is deformed at about four feet all the way down slight impression in the stone it seems to almost emerge from it um, as you look at it um, the uh, the impression of a creature emerges um, a slight bulge at the front with a, a claw which is facing outward another claw which is up against the other side and one which is down here uh, on the on the uh, lower right and as you look at it it sinks into the into the stone did we do I recognize what you creature? didn't see it okay, mm. okay. Um, well, I've got good news. Stone pieces for you guys to read. And bad news. There's some sort of stone creature that was down there that was uh, fading back out through the wall. Told ya! Might have been <laughs> elemental. Um, three arms. Three uh, arms. Made of stone, I guess. Looked like the same he stone. He looked like the stone there. walls, yes. I don't know if it was some sort of elemental like you just coming out of the stone or if it was something that's traveling through the stone or something that just happened to be made of stone but it didn't attack us and we were standing we were standing here for quite a while mm. we should gather these stone and paper tablets uh, did it look and I'll describe I'll describe a glomkin to him um, did it look any did it fit that description i.e. a zorn in other words, Zorn. But Glomkins has such a nice history. <laughs> uh, In game. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. For the viewers, it's a zarn. You but we take call it some a time to describe the glumpkin, as you recall. Um, three arms, three legs, kind of round, mo- mouth on the top of its shoulders instead of a head. You didn't see a mouth as such. Did the I three arms it? definitely fits. Did the I rest see a was, head? Uh, not really. It was just sort of a, a, a vague impression on the top of mm-hmm. the stone. So, so it's, it's got a similar sound to it. But it's un- it's uncertain because it was only there for a brief glimpse, and then when it realized that you could see it, it seemed to vanish. Mm. So it vanished as soon as you saw it. Just well, it just kind of yeah, moved back into the stone. Well, it's I mean, it could fit. I mean, this is at, at least the parts that I've seen. It's worked stone, worked stone, right? It seems to be. Like, it seems to be worked stone, so I know I wouldn't be able to go through it. Mm. But you're not really an elemental. Yes, but I turn into a real elemental. Can I, like, whisper well, something in primordial? You're druid. Yeah. Well, this is Kuzima saying yeah. it. You're, yes, not, you're not really yourself, an elemental. We will not well, that, that's what she would respond. Mm. <laughs> Just like you weren't really a wolf. You, you aren't really a wolf. No. Uh, but perhaps a real earth elemental can. I don't know. We don't encounter, well, we didn't encounter many of them in our caverns. No one's that size. Yeah. So. So I'll whisper something in primordial. Show where, yourself. Where are you We will not this? hurt you. Wherever he was looking. Okay, so you kind of walk up to the wall. Yeah. It's the interior wall where the there's wall probably thickest as well. <laughs> And so you're saying... Like, whis- we'll just whisper in Primordial, show yourself, we will not hurt you. Okay. Primordial has a particular sound to it, especially when you're, you're, you're aiming at more of an earth elemental, if you think that's what this is. Um, it would be the same sort of thing if she was a stone thing that you talked to her on. Um, so it has kind of a guttural nature to it. It's hard to whisper, right. um, as it kind of has to carry through, so you kind of get as close as you can to the stone. <laughs> And again, what was it you wanted to whisper? Just to, to show itself and that we won't hurt it. Okay. We know you're here. Just come on out. <laughs> um, as a hand emerges and swings at you oh, from the stone, a three fingered claw right. emerges from it, dark brown in the stone. Can I make an exterior save? For a, well, what's your AC? Mm-hmm. This is an attack. It's 11. <laughs> uh, so a 17 hits. Yeah. As it slashes across to for eight points of slashing mm. damage. And then attempts to grasp onto you. Now this you do get a dexterity saving throw. Seventeen plus one. Eighteen. As the hand kind of scratches across, you instinctively pull back and it tries to drag you into the wall. But he manages to slip out as his hand vanishes into the wall. And I'll say it again in Primordial. You motherfucker! I said we wouldn't hurt you! Okay. <laughs> Alright. Because now we will. <laughs> Very possibly. So what are you doing? You heard uh, Zach is swearing. Uh, Clark is looking at you. Neither of us know on. Primordial. It's true. Well, the swearing well, part is pretty easy to figure out <laughs> in most languages. She only knows Primordial when she is a, uh, right. an elemental. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a weird sort of quirk. Your ears change, I guess, when you're in different forms. You, you just don't understand it. <laughs> uh, this, whatever it is, did I see what it looked like? Uh, it had a sort of craggy three-fingered hand that came out. Fairly uh, large, a little bit bigger than your hand as well. Um, it does look remarkably familiar, however. Because like you saw a very close up to the Glumpkins in the, yeah. in the Serene Temple. It looks kind of like that. Yep, it's a Glumpkin. I'm assuming there's only one of them. I hope there's only one of them, but he seems to uh, not want to deal with us unless it, can, unless it involves violence. Your Clark just sort of say, great, and start scanning the walls. Yeah, we can probably just... If, there's, if this is the bottom floor and we have nothing else to there's do... There's still here, stairs going downward from here. Mm-hmm. Okay. I thought you said we were at the bottom floor. Nope, nope. At those four or five floors, first of all. Um... I don't want to use my wild shape form right now. 
So... I don't know if they can get to the upper floors. It's all stone. Yes. I don't know how many, I don't know how many of them there are. Do I remember uh, how we pacified the Glumkins at the beginning, like in the old like Serena Sanctum? Amrin talked at them. Yeah, it seemed to be the presence of Amrun, in fact, that uh, seemed to, to mollify them. Do I still have the Book of Paluxia? Mm, I don't think so. No, you put that in the library. Damn it. Or in my room, but yeah, that's a little library. Yeah, Chris is. I thought that I took the Book of Paluxia from them. No, there was like two. There yeah, were a yeah, few yeah, of them? Yeah, I think <laughs> you have the really good one. Yeah, uh, yeah I have the original that yeah. I gave back to Thylestra. Yeah. I had like some okay version. Yeah. All right. You are the one that had been basically wilting away outside for, yeah. or in the cave for a long time. I'm only in it for the writings. I don't care if it has, like, Paluxia's signature. <laughs> <laughs> don't need an original, just need a clean copy. Yeah. So. <laughs> I had the OG. Uh, anyway, um, I don't have anything on me that can help with this. Well, um, we don't have put the messages room. together again. So if Emerald was trapped here... Why would there be two beds if, em if it was just Emerald? I'm still on that. <laughs> maybe it was protecting Emerald? If we could somehow show some association with Emerald, then maybe the, the Globkins would leave us alone. Do Globkins normally need beds? I don't know. I, I've read a book about them, but not about their sleeping habits. Most wild creatures I've found don't need beds so much. Yeah. Perhaps nests or something, but... Uh, um, Slab of stone, a, a nest is not. <laughs> no. Well, I'm going down. All right, I'll follow you. Just be careful. Watch the walls. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so you're proceeding downward from here? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. What you would expect the next couple of floors to emerge, there's nothing but solid stone. Um, another floor, another round around it. You get a sense, at least, of, of where you would be. Um, there seems to be a solid core of stone. Um, and then you find a room with a stone door, which seems to be intact. You can see there's carving on the front side of the door. Um, actually, sorry, it would be a double door, small double door, so they can extend outward basically equivalent of one large door, but there's not enough clearance to make one large door. Is there a lock? It does not appear to be a lock, but it doesn't appear to move either. No visible hinges this time. Mm. So if there are any, they're on the inside. That makes it a push. Somebody... Uh, unlikely this world does not seem to offer the possibility of minute devices. Unless it's a slug on a stick. Or a pail of water above the door. <laughs> or a pail of acid above the door. Never, anyway. A pail of sticks above the door. Let's just complete this. <laughs> somebody want to push a... pail of sticks with slugs. <laughs> somebody, somebody more than two feet tall want to push on this door. Clark? Clark puts away his weapon, looks at the door. I'll assist. Cleans his hands, giving him advantage. And uh, Clark's doing a lot here. He should be gone by now. I should have just eliminated from the scene. All right. Uh, he, he heaves on it, he heaves on it, and it does not budge. He, he is our dedicated door right. opener. He actually mm. has strength. <laughs> it looks like it was moving, but it didn't move. Mm. I think there's something holding it. Maybe I'm gonna cast me a detect magic, ritually. That'll take ten minutes. I'll say in primordial. Can you let us in? We're really not here to cause damage. <laughs> okay. But I'll stay away from any walls while I say that. I, I, it's hard to because the the hallway is only four and a half feet wide. So. Also, you're standing on a stone floor. That too. Yeah. Well, I'll do my best. <laughs> to <say. laughs> Learn. Are you are you speaking it out loud? Or are yes. you whispering at this time? Or what are you doing? Just speaking it out loud. Okay. You can hear the echo of the sound, kind of both up and down. The, the stairways you've been and going in. I will mention we are associates of Emerald. Okay. I'm a hero. Um, to that there is a response. Not one you may have expected. There's a loud shrieking wail from somewhere below you. 
that seems to echo along the walls. We have found our prisoner. Um, Do you guys you get that that happening every time you say your friend is a Vimeral? Not, not every time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Are you think certain I... you want to be Emerald's friends? I More don't. as apprentice, really. As the drumming concludes and the spell is cast, your eyes glow slightly blue and you see the world in new forms. You see there is indeed, I believe it would be uh, abjuration magic Probably. on the door. Uh, magic it glows robot. slightly green in your vision. There's a spell on the door. It's probably what's holding it closed. And you said it's a push door? Mm-hmm. No hinges. Fair. It's a push or a slide. I you can try again, but it kind of... It's a heavy mm. door. Magic's holding it shut. Oh. <laughs> it's an exaggeration. No. I think magic's holding it shut. Maybe magic is preparing a fireball for the person who pushes on it twice. I don't know. Did you? Did you say? Clark kind of backs away from the door a little bit more. Uh, you know what kind of I gotta go over here and watch the stairs. Abjuration. Okay. The only thing I can really do to help is blow my other uh, is blow my wild shape. Mm. Well, if it's abjuration magic, it wouldn't be a fireball flying in our faces. You'd know that better than I would. Yes, I would. Can you get rid of the magic? I can try. Magic is magic, yo. <laughs> or do a... <laughs> We've been through this. Hashtag not all magic. magic. <laughs> so what are you doing, sir? Level three to spell magic on the door. Okay. Oop. I have to look something up very quickly. See, this would be a good use of knock, because we don't care if anyone hears us at this point. Yeah, I suppose. Okay. Um, as you kind of spell, probably do reach kind of forward slide. and trace the sigils in the air and kind of push them forward, the magic seems to flow over the door, and with your magical sight, you can now see that the spell has been dispelled. That did it. Good. And the door seems to slightly quaver, if now released from its its arcane lock. I'll push it over hmm? gently. It seems to move pretty easily under your hand. The, uh, the half door kind of swings open and you can see inside the glinting of something inside. It's not a lot of light yet until you actually open up the doors and push the globe through. Presumably you open both of them widely. Mm -hmm. And here you see what appears to be a magical laboratory. Probably once uh, at its height it was spectacular. Now however it looks worn and dated. You see small bits of glass that you have not seen since you've entered this realm. You see small bits of what appears at first to be metal, and then you realize it's actually stone that's been worked carefully. And some of that stone appears to glitter slightly. And as the door is opened, in particular, Zacchaeus, there's a weird sensation in the back of your head. Mm -hmm. Something familiar. Something... Can't quite put your finger on it. It's like the buzzing of a small bee. Something hum like. Um, inside, what you see is the tables that have been strewn about that have an assortment of different different magical implements. There are things here you get used to concentrate and transform alchemical uh, elements. Things here to be used as sort of a, a mold into which you can pour other things to form something. There are um, there is a large slab in the middle, like the bed slabs, but this time tilted, and you can see that there are stone cuffs that are placed in different places. They can be placed over at the bottom, over the sides, over the top at different levels, and those can even be adjusted. Um, there is a, a worn uh, uh, part exist. in the middle. What's that? If one was alone here, why would those exist? Um, there is, uh, <laughs> yeah, you can kind of see some beakers empty now um, that seem to have been formed out of glass. Uh, and then uh, a, a stone bucket. Uh, and that's where you sense the, the glinting coming from. And you look over and it's actually small, um, 
smooth stones, each of which seem to have a small shard of a uh, uh, gem or something within within them. Kind of like a, a, a black stone with a shard that's been shoved part way in. The shards themselves, in this case, are remarkably small. We're looking at basically a little smaller than your thumbnail. Okay. Um, and just a, a bucket full of them. Okay. Um, so are they similar to the ones we picked up, like the diamond and the sapphire? The diamond's definitely bigger. Okay. The sapphire has a similar sh shape, but it's much larger, about twice the size of any one of these. Is there any active magic going on that I see? Uh, looking around the room, there is magic within these shards. It's more like potential. It, it kind of mm. it has multiple colors that keep shifting within them. It's more potential or a storage of potential energy. Mm. Uh, not that there's any energy within them directly. Uh, there is leftover transmutation magic on the slab itself. Um, and mm. you also see uh, some cast off, um, what looks like broken pottery essentially behind the slab as well. Sort of central in the center of the room, benches around the outside. They're still fairly small rooms as you can see from that. There are, are plenty there? of shards in this bucket. Kind of like the ones we picked, up, we, we picked up earlier. I see. Are there any reddish brown stains on the the tilted bed manacle thing? As you move a little bit closer and look at the, the manacles... I'll move right over and sniff it. And yeah. Definitely on the manacles themselves. There's right around the edges where they were... And they seem to be weirdly adjustable as the stones can kind of t be twisted together mm. to tighten up. Definitely so. I know where it is. Um, you also smell a bit of uh, of it coming from the pile of pots, the broken pottery behind. Someone, people were tortured here. Tortured or experimented on? Yes. Both. You gonna check out the room, each of you? Yeah. Yeah. Investigation. Yeah, somebody checks. might want to uh, keep an eye out on the door. I'll do that, says Clark. Radix looks towards the other direction. She's I looking can outward. actually see things. Okay, so investigation <laughs> is 18 plus 10, so 25. Okay. So 18, 25, and 16. 16? All right. Each of you that was investigation, get, right? That was investigation, mm -hmm. yeah. Each of you are going to get uh, four draws from the hat for this particular Oh, my God. Because you all did pretty well. Also, I made way too many of these, so I think I'll just start handing them out like candy. And if we run out, we run out. Do you want me to grab four for you? Sure. Yeah, if you can do that, the easiest. I think we still have a few left. One and two, three. <gasps> Friendwick. Four. What? That's the name I didn't expect to see here. Start to look at all of the different uh, things. You still hear now that wail that happened before is now answered by three more. Oh, that rhymed. Ooh. Mm. Oh dear, I got Shakespearean. This can't be good. Uh, well, I have, we are born with a divine spark. <laughs> Again, that one is sort of crudely stamped into <laughs> a piece of stone. A lot of these are, are pieces of, of, uh, of, in some cases, it's actual like paper. but uh, And actually, one of the things that you would realize, Zach, is as you start to look on the back of them, um, those are all are magical formulae. The paper that you found mm -hmm. was part of a spell book at one point. Whoa. That was torn up and and or was used or was repurposed in this case. In fact, some of these are are writings right over top of those chem alchemical and, and magical symbols. Um, the others that you find are actually fabric that has been carefully dyed or, or transferred to make the symbols on them necessary. These are either fabric or papers of a spell book. It's almost like Emerald cannibalizes his own spell book to write these notes. This should be interesting. The first experiment in embedding a crystal was unsuccessful. If local lore holds true, however, he will return in time, albeit changed by the experience. The beholder's price was high, but securing some of, of my mind from these scars is worth the loss. So somebody made a deal with South Hog. I and know who the second bed is for, or was for. My companion is gone. He has not returned in a long time, and I do not think he would abandon me, no matter how much punishment death might inflict upon him. 
Perhaps you found a way out. I can only hope that I can only hope this to be true. Good luck, Brinwick. Is this a name you know? Yes. He, he's gems. Here. Gems being embedded. Mm-hmm. If Omisha is not protected, the Titans will come. The gods do nothing. Perhaps they all should be removed. What? Seems a little stressful. <laughs> Titans. Any others people want to share? Yeah, I'm just like... I'm dyslexic and reading before reading out loud. I'm unfolding them properly. That's fair. That's totally fair. <laughs> this fits with the earlier one. He mentions uh, he tried to avoid death, but uh, could not. He's lost much memory and fears that he would lose more precious secrets and knowledge. Perhaps that's why he made the deal with the Beholder to get his memories back. I'll just reread these ones after. Here's one about the forest, the festering. The forest has grown more dangerous. I feel it is her influence. Is her at the heart of the forest or Belexia? That was a reader's note, by the way. <laughs> I am finished with her mission. I will help her no more. I did my part to secure the seed, and with it, peace. I think I know who the her is. Who? The druid was correct. The devil's sadness has bound him. We will be able to work in relative peace. Oh. I think your Did friend you... was working with the... Uh... Versace. Yes. Perhaps they have arranged to have Pachiro bound in sadness and unable to do anything. What if he did do something? I I'm sure we could restore his uh, motivation if we brought him the bone of Belexia. Or if we brought back Belexia somehow. But it's, it seems like they killed her. Could it be that I'm the author of those wo uh, words? Have I returned from death again, uh, as they tell? I entered through the door on instinct, now fi uh, finding myself surrounded by the ghost of who I once was. And what of these marks? I, I can sense no movement of time. So what do they count? Uh, did that just... That was worrying about the same thing earlier. I hope it's not reading our minds, whatever it is. Yes, I'm that good that I read your minds and then retroactively put these in a small piece of paper <laughs> and I fold it up and put it. In. It's a magic trick, folks. It's amazing. So I had some a small hat. printer back here. It's great. <laughs> the star has fallen here. I knew it. I, I felt something, some kind of weird sensation. Do you remember when we were in in the, the beehive, the hum? Did you feel the hum? Did I feel the hum? I think I did. Yeah, eventually. Yeah. Oh yeah, I unattuned my ring, yeah. There was a weird sensation when I walked into this into this laboratory and it now that this message is here, I, I it's the hum. Anyway, I'll I'll start again. A star has fallen here. Which is like the same as the hum, right? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that can be the only explanation, although there are no stars in this accursed underworld. Yet it must be, as the effects are nearly the same. If this is one of Ignis's own, its power may be ex access to breach this place. I may yet escape. Okay, let's... So he escaped by using a star. Clearly, because... Possibly. Well, we, we have a lot of these collecting. Can we kind of or try to organize them in some way a little bit? I'm just like searching in some crap. Here, here's, here's one more. <laughs> Word seems to have spread about this place. Perhaps I was followed on my last trading run. It has been ransacked, and much of what I have built has been ravaged. I will need to start over. But first, I will find a better way to secure the entrance, one requiring my deepest intellect, so that I, and I alone, may enter. Well, I, I guess he failed, because, I mean, I'm assuming if, you're referring to, if he's referring to this place. Seems likely. It's only as a place only a caster could enter, or someone who has the spirits of dead people compressed into coins. Hmm. Uh, the last I found was, the container has been made. I do not know what she wishes to do with it, but it will withstand the Avatar's wrath of that, I am certain. Sounds like a container meant to... Keep a god out or in. And as you collect all of these things and start to cross your notes, the sound of wailing grows stronger, echoing up the stairs. And you hear Clark say something along the lines of, uh, guys, Do I, I think we'll take a break at that point and see if we can actually get Clark here. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so we're going to see if that works. Hopefully he's uh, going to be free. That'll be funny if he's not. We just kind of play on and, I don't know, he vanishes or something. I haven't quite figured that out. So we'll be back hopefully within about uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes. And again, if you're watching this on YouTube, Oof. no time has passed. I have erased time. There's no way to measure it. You can have all those scratched marks on your screen if you want. That's <laughs> not my fault. You were just tracking something. We shall return. I gotta pee. <laughs> I've been holding that in for like 45 minutes. We're still waiting for the, the transition to go. So we're still watching this technology. It is grand. And Nax had to pee. And then Nax had to pee. Very exciting behind the scenes now. Low transition here. But hey, uh -huh. just as I'm saying that, it goes quickly. We have a person. Look, we have magically had a Jody appear. Hi. Welcome back, Jody. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, in case you have not gathered so far, Jody is the proper player of Clark, and I was just impersonating badly for a certain amount of time. Brad, I'm glad you could make it. I th I'm happy to be uh, uh, playing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Yeah. I'll be sure to play you from now on. Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> And there were a number of potential options. We knew Jody was going to be late today, so we were, had a whole bunch of different options. I decided the simplest one is to not do anything and just sort of fake Jody for a while. Uh, well, you can watch later to see if I did it I think at I all might. accurately. Sounds it'd be, exciting. It'd be kind of hilarious. But a wailing was heard from below, uh, and Clark kind of sent something in in motion towards him. Now, for those of you who are watching uh, with the overhead map there, or the three quarter map for that matter. Um, the middle floor where the people are all sitting right now is the floor that actually contains the the laboratory. Up from there, which would be well, the one marked up, is the f the floor which had no had no uh, room in the center in that particular case. I just happens to have some generic floors here, and then the other side is the room below, which happens to have no room as well. You'll count motion a little bit weirdly here, but essentially, you, if we if we always remember that a small connects to a large, small means go down, large means coming from above, then we should be able to work this out. And how uh, many uh -huh. feet are the staircases? Just to uh, each of those, uh, the we'll say that the the uh, black one mm -hmm. uh, represents uh, five feet of movement, so okay. you can basically skip two stairs in, in time. Okay. Um, hopefully, that works out simply enough. But that seems to be about approximately what they're what they're spaced at there. Um, actually, no. Let's just make it easy. That yeah, no, two makes five. That makes that's about the same square size. So okay. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to that way we have standard staircases. Right. Now all of you are in the room except for Clark at the moment. You have had warning of something coming, and Clark had an indication that he could hear something further down the the hallway, further down in the tower. So we will roll initiative. There's no surprise in this particular case. Five. And I will also roll initiative for these things and forget what I'm doing. It's only been a month. How is it possible I could forget everything in a month? Oh, wait. It is. And I just did. Uh, so. Um, uh, uh, sorry. I got to mark off my things here. And that is. Terrible. How many whales can we hear? Uh, you heard at least a couple. Um, and can I understand what they're saying? Wordless. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> Technically, yes, you do understand what they said. What they said was indescribably wordless, which is pretty awful. All right. That's more or less correct. So, uh, 25 to 30. I don't know if anybody's approaching that level yet. There we go. 25. 25. Woo! I thought somebody might. So I'm the only one who can on initiative. Um, but, uh, yes. At the moment. Bards. Uh, uh, so plus uh, the ambush thing lets me add uh, more to my initiative. 20 to 25. No? Okay. 15 to 20. I think we all rolled shitty. <laughs> I rolled decent. Okay. Interesting. 10 to 15. 13. So 13. Okay, just I rolled shitty. <laughs> 13 for Elzera. 11 for me. 11 for Clark. Uh, let me see. 5 to 10. 5. Okay, so 
this one, and then Zakis with the home run at the end. <laughs> All right. Have you seen those? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Kazima, you heard the wailing from outside. It's hard to tell much when you're in the room itself where it's coming from other than outside of the room. It's also echoing around the walls. What would you like to do? Uh, here, I'm just noticing now that the only entrance into the room is over here. Mm -hmm. So Clark probably has to be on this side because he couldn't actually get there. The entrance in the room is there, but the hallway continues all the way around. Yep, but if you go this way, that stairs up, and you go this way, that stairs down. There's right. actually no way to reach that. that no, but the, the, he's on the stairs downward. Yeah, but he would be on this side because we would have been coming down right, and around, around that and that's way. That's the top of the stairs, and yeah, I guess we just moved him to the bottom of the visible stairs there. But okay, because I thought he was guarding the top. Sure, so. that's okay. Um, okay, then I will. Well, I'm just sorry, just because if he's over there, then I can't reach him. But uh, oh, I see. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six. It was a practical reason. Uh, actually, seven, and I'll just. Prepare to shoot the first thing that uh, attacks Clark. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to try a poisoned blow dart, but it's because he has no idea what's coming up. Clark doesn't either. Yeah, Clark. Poisoned Nobody does. But sure. Okay. Um, Clark, make a perception check. I would love to. Uh, I see nothing. You see... How badly do you see nothing? Uh, I rolled a two, so I got a ten. Okay. That's... That's... That actually... Is, that's uh, a lot of... That's a lot of pluses, but still a ten. Uh, you're vaguely sensing that there's movement ahead. Do you have dark vision? Yes. Okay. Uh, there is some light being provided, but only in the room at the moment. Right. Um, so you're only seeing a, the barest sliver of light coming around you. Right. So actually a disadvantage for perception checks when you're not in light. Remember that. Okay. Because the two people carrying light are in the room. Um, okay then, then that is not seen, and okay, that's nothing, and that's nothing. Oh, Zara, it's your turn. Nothing. Cool. Um, I'm going to step away from this wall. Okay. Um. Go to the middle of the room. Okay, let's try not to kick the uh, the, Sorry. <laughs> the, the the experimentation slab over. Just flip it. Tear the room sure up. It's fine. Flip it over. <laughs> All right. Are you going to do anything besides move? Um, I'm going to go there, uh, and I'm going to knock an arrow and hold position because I hear stuff coming. Uh, I am going to put my torch down on the stone slab. This kind of looks like a torch. <laughs> of course you have a torch. You <laughs> actually do have a torch. It's I think a, that's a spiritual it's a, weapon. It's a spiritual <laughs> weapon. Uh -huh. but it, it definitely do in this case. Yeah. yeah it kind of looks like a torch. Sure. I want to have like UV paint, just have a UV light that's on there, yes. so little things like that will glow. That'd be kind of neat. <laughs> want too many things. Okay, um, so you put the torch down and you are uh, readying an arrow? Yep. Uh, and I activate my shield. Jump. Um... Is that after short rest of recharges or after or once per day? It is. Oh, it doesn't have any charge, right? <laughs> I can do it seven times and <laughs> in <laughs> one thing if I wanted. Keep to. a note of that, Clark. You're up. <laughs> you can hear kind of whispering and wailing below you, but it hasn't seemed to move any closer just yet. Does it feel? It's a closed space, but mm -hmm. does it feel like it's within the next thirty or forty feet that the sound is coming from? Um, unfortunately, with that perception check, it's impossible to tell. There's too much echo here. The walls are too solid, and you've heard different noises that, you know, could be a long ways away. Okay. Um, I would like to ask uh, Kuzaima mm -hmm. if, if they have any ideas. Thing I saw before had three arms and appeared to be made of stone. It had claws. And we we had actively discussed that it was a glomkin. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. In that case. So yeah, you know it was basically like a Earth elemental ish yeah, thing. Okay. <clears throat> uh, uh, Clark's there was gonna... one to Paluxia, at least the ones that we've encountered. Clark's going to attempt a, an athletic feat as part of his action. Or All as, right. as his action. He's got two feet, so yeah. that's going to go. Well, he's got two feet and two arms. He's going to brace two arms on the wall and two feet on the wall and blip, 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 blip. And then climb as high as to the ceiling as he can. Okay. And the ceilings gonna, aren't super high. And he's going to but... put the, the, the blade in his teeth. Okay. Oh, I see what you're doing. Oh, that's kind of Drop clever. upon is a his very cool. Very cool. Okay. Make an athletics check to All see right. how. Uh... Kacha. Uh, athletics twenty-eight ish. Okay. <laughs> yeah. As uh, you easily, Ish. it's actually kind of cramped because the, the walls are only four and a half feet apart from each That's other. That's all right. That makes it easy. So you're actually kind of having to kind of scrunch down in position. That's okay. Uh, probably can actually turn your head in a certain way where your shoulders are actually holding onto the wall. You can't hold this position for long, That's but fine. for one round, you, you have that as a surprise right. position. And I'll have this weapon ready, and that'll be his action in his move, I imagine. Uh, yep, okay. yep. That's uh, actually you are holding your action. Okay. Um, so I'll say that, was, that was your to, move. My intent is to drop on the nearest crib, okay. and to charge the field. Sounds good. All right, Zakis, you're up. Do I recognize the whaling at all? Like, have I heard some kind of creature? Make a history check. Eleven plus ten. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Um, there are legends uh, that are told of um, creatures who are sometimes called the Wailing Dead. Um, their cry is sometimes said to kill on, uh, on hearing it. Too late. But there's lots of... There are a couple of other legends as well of screaming spirits... Generally, however, it falls into the category of things that are not willingly or happily dead. I'll scream at my party. <laughs> Possible wailing dead? Don't let them wail at you. And <laughs> I will... Was that my action? or? No, I'll say that was a free action. Okay. Is there any like usable pieces of paper next to me right now? There's the ones you have that have been written on. Okay. I'll try one more time to tell the Glopkins and Primordial. Okay. Please help us fight these things. So you're gonna shout out and then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With fire bolt range. Okay. Fire bolt range of. Of oh, Zara, okay. Of, of whatever's coming up the <laughs> stairs. <laughs> okay. You can't uh, see through the wall there, though. Keep that in mind. Yeah, you might want to move one more. Okay. I forgot there was a wall there. My bad. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kuzaima. Nothing seems to have appeared, and there's just this sort of steady um, polyphonic wail coming from an indeterminate space. Well... I uh, change it to uh, shooting at the first dangerous thing that I see coming up the stairs. Okay. So you're going to hold your action there. Mm hmm All right. So, where is my... Da, 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 da. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, emerging out of the floor, right beside where Elzera is standing. Ah. A semi-translucent being oh. comes to fly upward, what? extending its uh, its uh, hands in your direction, screaming as it emerges from this. Well, that's cheating. Um, <laughs> make a wisdom saving throw first of all. Ridiculous. In which direction? Because that's <laughs> important. Fair. Uh, Twenty-five. Okay. Just the very sight of it causes you to shiver slightly, but you're strongly in, in touch with yourself and your emotions, and you say to yourself, no, this cannot be as dangerous as it seems to be. And then it will... S oh, man, that could be really mean. Yeah. Let's do that. 
As it reaches forward and its claws sink into you, make a charisma saving throw. Oh, okay. <laughs> Could be really neat. At least I don't have a negative anymore. 16. 16. Uh, as you feel it uh, pass, pass through you and... Total of one charisma save, you, by the way. That's, yo. that's kind of amazing. Catnado. Uh, Catnado. <laughs> okay. Um, as you find it passing into you and it for a moment shares your body, uh, the shivering increases, the frightening moment that you had just seeming to elevate until suddenly you just hold on to that core of yourself. What's a warm memory that centers Alzara at this terrifying moment? In this current situation, it is the thought that she is so close. So close to figuring out what the fuck is going on. Okay. In which direction? Because there's a lot of things going on right now. There's a lot of things going on, but she's just so close to figuring out what's going on with Riordan. Okay. As a warm summer day, a small, spontaneous picnic under a tree, that moment, his smile, the way he looks at you, rings true in your mind and in your heart. It is ejected and stands beside you. It looks upset, angry, furious, but otherwise just stands there. If that was its action. Uh, <laughs> uh, I believe that's... Yes, that's an action. Uh, let's see. That is that. Uh, and from beside where Zacchaeus was emerges another, this time less corporeal. From the waist downward, almost nothing at all. Um, a, a, a mere shadow of its former self. Nothing more distinct than an outline. Uh, it uh, uh, looks around, realizing that, that Zacchaeus is no longer there, uh, but does see Elzera right there. I didn't do this on purpose, I swear. And moves forward <laughs> to strike at you. Uh, is that a range? Oh yeah, no, it has, it's a touch. Okay. Let's do that that close. Uh, a nine does not hit you, I'm no. assuming. You might be happy for that. Uh, Probably. As, it, as it's, uh, its fingers extend out in long claw-like, long claw uh, 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 almost like rakes, as it tries to rake through your soul. And once again, you can kind of feel this chill, rebuffed only slightly by that memory that you're holding on to. Next, from beside Clark, emerges another one of these, yeah. straight out of the wall. That's not now, nice. both of you have whole held actions. Uh, it does, well, let's see if it does notice you, actually. I'm invisible. Uh, you're invisible because the light's right there? Mm. No, there's no light right there. Yep, the, or gl the globe that he has. Yeah. Because he popped out of ah, the hallway. thanks. What? Um... However, it doesn't seem to notice you. Um, is that is that it's completely when, disaffected? Actually, by the light, the, or is it only partially disaffected? I think it's the light. The globe follows him at yeah, 20, 20 feet. The globe's still back yeah, in the still room. Back in the room. Uh, okay, then you can't see anything, okay. and neither can Clark. Well, no. Even in darkness, we can see black and white shading within short distances. Yes, uh, up to sixty feet for them, ninety feet for uh, me. Hmm. It shouldn't be... Uh, well, well yeah. if, if it's yes, dim sure. light, we okay. can see normally. If right. it's darkness, we can just see black and white. Yeah. Um, you're at disadvantage for perception rolls. Yeah. It works. You can still see, but you're at disadvantage. However, it didn't seem to notice you, uh, but it does center on you. So, you have a held action? Yep. I'll go. And I guess I'm going to try and hit it in the eye, because I'm okay. trying to figure where the hell would it be vulnerable? Okay. It is its most distinct, distinct point is the face. You can see vague outlines in this particular case of uh, tusks on its uh, f uh, facial features. You, rec you recognize a kind of an orc-like shape to its head, but most of it is just in shadow and hmm. outline. Thanks to Clark's presence, I have advantage. Ooh. I'm happy to be mm. present. Uh, is that because... Of, oh, pack tactics. Yeah. Yep. Pack tactics. Mm. 
Well, I'll take the 18 instead of the 1. <laughs> uh, 18 is a hit. That's a 20-something total. Oh, sorry. Uh, I meant to say minus 5 to get plus 10, because that's where I'm trying to hit the eye. Uh, I'll allow it for this time, but try not to put that on afterwards. Yeah. After you successfully rolled it with five, more than plus 5, or more than minus 10, so um, minus 5. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's 1 point, plus 4 points is 5, plus 10 points is 15... What I'm assuming the poison of, does nothing to it. What kind of damage is it? Uh, piercing. Okay. Basic piercing. Okay. Uh, along with some poison, but I'm assuming it's not going to be vulnerable to poison. Poison will it. not have any effect on it. Yep. Uh, oh, and the... Uh, the uh, sneak attack. I think 1d6. Two more, so 17 total. 17? Dunk. As the the dart kind of shreds through its form, which which spreads out and then kind of reforms in the way that it looked before. Um, now it will make its attack. Actually, you have a held action as well. Yeah, moment. I'd like to drop down and uh, attempt to uh, uh, what do you call that? Sneak attack it. Okay. That's the intent. Um, I don't think I get advantage because of three reasons, but I might get the sneak attack. Um. Yeah, well, you, yeah, because you've uh, got... It did not oh, notice you, yeah. so you effectively yeah. have hidden from it. Because so you were not in it, it. It expected you here, and it did not even notice you there. It noticed him directly. So advantage? Yep. Okay. In this case. Well, they roll about the same anyway. <laughs> uh, for the sax, uh, 12, 24? That's definitely a hit. Cool. Uh, so, ghosty guy... We'll take four plus so seven regular ass damage. Ass damage is bad. Yep. Uh, four radiant damage. Woo! Uh -huh. And don't like those. Those are worse. Uh, <laughs> and another six uh, sneak attack damage. So, uh, let's see here, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and... Well, I have to do them separately. Oh, sorry. Um, as the the cut of the sword itself did seems to almost go through, or the dagger, sorry, goes goes through it almost like you're cutting uh, a wisp of cloud, mm -hmm. uh, and seems to only kind of vaguely blur its outline, but the little burst of, yeah. of, uh, yeah, of, uh, Holy damage, essentially. It's radiant. Radiant damage. It's radiant uh, uh, king killing damage. Seems to seems to to spark at it a little bit. Yeah, uh, I believe it's considered a magical weapon. If that mm -hmm. helps. Um, yep. If it ha if it does magical damage of some sort, it's a magical weapon. Right. The weapon. sax has actually been enchanted. Yeah. Yep. I have to double something. Uh, okay. It is. And does the creature react to the to the burning blade of Clark? Um, it's not happy about it. Okay. It's definitely true there. That's good. Uh, then it will attempt to attack Kuzaima, who it had seen before. It'll need to get through Clark first, um, unfortunately. Unless it has a reach weapon. Um, or it does Clark, have reach, or, but it can actually just move through Clark. Well, that works, too. Does Clark get an opportunity to attack? <laughs> it literally yeah, just sort of, dropped on in it. midway through its swing, you drop on it, and it just sort of swings right through you. Okay. Uh, does an 18 hit Kuzaima? Mm-hmm. You take uh, eight points of necrotic damage and make a constitution saving throw, please. Nineteen. Okay. You can feel it trying to tug away at your soul uh, as it tries to uh, damage you. Uh, then it is going to move sideways as it passes straight through the wall. Uh, let's see. Next. Question. Mm -hmm. Is that an attack of opportunity? Or? Um, once it goes into the wall, you can't really attack it anymore, and that was the point at which it reached outside of your Sounds range. Sounds good. So. Okay. Not a problem. Just thought I'd ask. Yeah. It's quite literally around you at the point at which it goes. There's not really any opportunity to, to react. That's but good of, point, though. Good point. I it would stay there. Um, okay. Let's see. 
And it appears there. Oh, you're in fireball range now. <laughs> oh, actually. What? At this point, uh, you hear the wailing appear behind you. Oh. And you kind of get the sense that something is behind you that does not seem to be happy. As spectral claws reach out for you, a, a similar form to the one before. This one uh, is actually a smaller form. Uh, again, the bottom half of the creature is, is obscured or gone or missed or nothing at all. But the upper half has the strange, uh, uh, strangely familiar shape of a halfling. Uh, but I do not believe a seven hits. No, it doesn't. As its claws go right through you. It too moves forward through you and then seems to disappear in the wall beside you. That was um, terrifying. And the third one. Oh, geez. Like a fifth one? A third one of these particular things okay. floats up from here. Sees the situation. Well, actually, attempt to swipe at you again because you're conveniently right there. 14? Yeah, that's it. Oh. I'm not expecting that. Eight points of necrotic damage and a constitution saving throw. Oh, Con save is like a five. Five? Your maximum hit points are reduced by eight. Motherfucker. Gross. Is that, re re like, restorable? As you feel your life being, life essence being drawn out of you. I had this happen to my barbarian a couple weeks ago. I went from 111 to 40. Is it undoable? At this point, you don't know. Right. So, it actually has happened in in his presence before. From other creatures. I don't know if, yeah. I don't know if these ones have ever been faced before. Yeah, but I mean like permanent, uh, or well, I maximum hit point that. loss we had restored in the in the group. I know. <laughs> Tends to be me. <laughs> We've also had it increased. Not right now, though. But... Yes, right now. Yeah, right now we've got an extra 10. Yeah, we have 84. So this is taken out of that one? It floats out of it. So maybe that's what this um, if is. You're, if your maximum has been increased, then yes, it, your maximum comes down. Okay, so it doesn't um, affect my basic thing. Well, it, it is your maximum. Yeah, your once maximum. the spell goes away, you'll lose another 10. Oh, that sucks. Basically, yes. Uh, it's an ongoing effect. Okay. Uh, that's those guys. Now, let's see. This one can try something interesting. Let's try something interesting. Let's see if that works. No, oh, that doesn't work. Okay, we'll do something else then. Hmm. Hmm, so many options. Where are you? You're there. Uh, I think since it's right in front of you, the one that tried to possess you before is now screeching in rage. This one is a full body apparition. And these are not mm -hmm. Zorn, correct? These are not Zorn. Um, in fact, that what you can see in front of you looks like a human human woman. Uh. Um, but makes a swinging towards you. Does a 23 hit. Yes. Ooh, that's actually rare. I only have an AC of 16. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I often have things that just don't seem to have much for, for hitting. Uh, however, that's 17 necrotic damage. Gross. Um, and then it will... Laugh is this weird twisting lilt to its uh, the sound of its voice uh, as it floats backwards through the wall. But you will get an attack of opportunity because cool. you have there where it gets there. Uh, I I'm going to hit it with my quarter staff because it's in. Okay, you had the notched arrow. Yeah, but mm. too early. 
fair. Uh, I would be at disadvantage, though, because it's in range. It's in range, yeah. So that 15 becomes a 5. No. 5 is a miss. Uh, give me a second. I yeah, well, plus fives. the modifiers. Give me a oh, second. right. I'm not playing this character in a month. <laughs> the, the first number that comes into adding is 15, and I know this character does not have a plus 15. <laughs> that would be scary. I would have to be introduced a whole different level of creatures. It would be about an 11 or so. No, it's a plus 7. <laughs> okay, it's a 12. Uh, so 12. 12 is a hit. Woo. Oh, plus one longbow for the win. Uh, that is 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, as the arrow actually flies through it, but you can see a significant hole that's sort of torn in its in its uh, uh, its torso, at least momentarily before it kind of reforms. Cool, and that is magical. And that is magical, which is why it hurts so badly. D uh, just making. Now I don't remember if you have the one that stops their motion when you've done an attack. No. On reaction, no. Okay. Mm -mm. So it will continue to move back beyond the wall. Cool. 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 Elzera, it is your turn. However. Hi. Did, um, did you skip me entirely? No, you're at the end. Okay. Yeah, you went into the hallway. Right. Yep. Right. There were a lot of people on it too. Yep. Uh, I thought the same thing for a moment. Don't worry. <laughs> I've tried to get out of that habit. <laughs> Please tell me if I have, but I think I've gotten out of that habit. Um. I am going to drop a level three moonbeam in this room. Okay. Um, buddy who just hurt me is gone, so I'm going. Actually, buddy who has hurt me. Uh, Ta table dancer. Ta the guy on the table. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Is that a ten by? Was it uh, like this big, or was it smaller? I believe that it's it, that big. It is that big. Okay. So mm -hmm. we'll put it's that a on two by two. Put that on the thing there then. Boom. Um, In the space. Level three. Yeah, five. Five foot radius. So. What kind of damage is that? It is radiant. Yeah. Uh, and I'm go just going to take these out so I remember to roll them. So three. D10 because it's a level three. So those are there. And I am going to uh, become a Z Rock. Okay. Uh, yeah. Because having an AC of 20. It's nice, nice, nice. As you barely fit in the room, actually. Shoot's about to get real. Um, which means you cannot exit the room. You can't fit. Yep, and this is worked Just so you know. Yep. Uh, I'm content with this. Uh, okay. So, and I would have placed it in that moon boom in a way that I would not be in it. Because, yep. Because logic. There's, there's just enough space for that. Just enough space. Uh, I, I know the consequences of me going through this moonbeam. <laughs> Means me not being rock. <laughs> not necessarily. Oh, actually, yeah, it would. It so literally it does. I, yeah. uh, I would have put it actually so that Buddy is in the edge, so that I'm, yeah. Okay. So it's, more kind of it's probably just yeah. on the other side. It's really specific sort of thing. Anyway, so. Yeah. So. All right, then. Uh, well, that that's my action. is your turn. Yep. Okay. Clark, you're up. All right, well, there's no enemies in front of me, and there's the sounds coming from behind me. So it sounds like I'll go back into the room or close to it. Um, you can get can... by uh, uh, Kuzima. Kuzima, but mm -hmm. you can't get by uh, uh, Zakis. He's in the way. Just knock him over. Right. Well, you can go through friendly squares. It's too tight in this case. As I said before, it's too tight for people to actually squeeze. No, actually, well, four and a half I would feet. say it's, we it's, can squeeze it's, by. It's it's two difficult people. terrain. Well, you, I mean, you're carrying weapons and trying to hurry, so I'll say it's difficult terrain for the one square getting by could be okay. by uh, Zakis. Sure. Uh, Three, it's four, meant to be five. a space which is which can, is closed. I can do in four, so I'll get right up to him, I guess. Really? No, up nope. to you. No, he can go up to you, but he yeah. can't go. He can't, can't go past, past you. you. He doesn't have the movement. I'm cursed. Uh, it's oh, in right. front of him. Okay. There. there yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, Bravo, hold, lab. hold action until uh, other ghost makes its presence known and is in range. Okay. Um, 
So, what does it want to do? Hmm. Hmm. What does it want to do? Do I feel anything? Because I, I do have tremor sense. Do I feel hmm. anything that is not currently on the board? How? What's the range of tremor sense? 60 feet. 60 feet? No. At least I think it's 60 feet. Mm. I have to check something that I just realized I didn't have up here. How weird is that? I forgot something. Yeah. Ready at home? Take a drink. Um, wow. Let's press up to 23. Well, I'll do this in the moment, and I will come back and circle around to what I'm trying to remember. Uh, that's not it. Uh, as it will... Caught between a rock and a hard place. Um, Sink into the floor where it is, and then you do not see it. So, uh, I get the right here. Do, do, do. Oh, no, he hasn't actually shown up. That's why I was confused. What? Uh, let's see. Well, in that case, that, that's what I mean. Like everything that is already gone. Yeah, yeah is... they they don't make any any tremors. Mm -hmm. If they're incorporeal, they're incorporeal. They don't. They don't actually make any tremors. Okay. Um, uh, but now I've got to remember where there it is. I knew it was there somewhere. Uh, okay. Uh, then that will be. So it will appear there as this ragged form emerges out of the ground. This time it is a uh, seems to be a female form with uh, hair streaming outward, twisted and knotting on itself. Um, first of all, um, Zacchaeus, uh, let's see, everyone. Uh, has to make a wisdom saving throw. As their frightening visage just simply overwhelms. Uh, well, that's an eight. Sixteen. Five. Twelve. Twelve. So the one who succeeded, no effect. The three of you are frightened for one minute. Right. Damn it. Bye, Is there everybody. a save per round or just... Uh, you can repeat the saving throw at the okay. end of each of your turns. Yep. That means we and, cannot move closer. And you have disadvantage on attacks if it's within sight. Do I have to move away as well? I think. No. Uh, that's, it's, that's the other one. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to move away, no. Uh, let me see. Yeah, you're just frightened. So you can't move any closer. You're disadvantaged for attacks and saving throws, I think. Okay, okay. There are some spells that do have that. Effect. Frightens not saves. I'm just gonna it's just can't get closer. There's a lot of things you can look up quickly. That's not one of them, unfortunately. Uh, I'm always forgetting that one. I think there's something else I'm forgetting. I have cards for conditions, but they're like that one. Disabilities on the ability useful. checks and attack rolls and the source of fears within lines of sight. So not saving throws, but ability, all, all skill rolls and attack rolls. No. And you can't willingly move closer. Um, all right. Well, we can't move away because Clark's in my way, so we'll see what happens. And Clark's not that big. <laughs> uh, let's see. That's its action. So.
I think we'll stay there at the moment. Just so uh, you know, Tremor Sense does specifically say anything that is in contact with the ground. But it's incorporeal and floats. Yep. yep. So. So. Um, they have that. They're the one of the few things that yep. can't be picked up by that. Those and burbs. 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 Oh, birds in flight. I thought you said burbs. I was like, I don't mm-hmm. understand. Yeah, he burbs. 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 Oh. Okay. Now I'm even more confused. Which is the usual state. Uh, so let's see. That was <coughs> this guy who finally moved. Now it's Zakus. This crazy, weird thing has just appeared behind you. So Zagus tries to back up, but backs into Clark, and it's like, oh shit, oh shit, you, you, oh shit. You can move through a space as we determined, but it's difficult terrain. But it's like panic, and I just backed into something, and it's like, as a cleric, yeah. is that a monster, is that a wall? Yeah. I mean, is it another So pro? I'm just going to like expend all the energy I have, as in like a sixth level spell slot, and do a disintegrate towards whatever thing is scaring me. Okay. So she has to save versus like a 19. Uh, but what kind of magic is it? Force. Yeah. Transmutation? No, no. disintegrate is oh. force damage. Yeah. Force damage. Okay. Uh, let's see what her roll will be. What is the saving throw? 19. No, what is the thing I have to save? What's the, <coughs> what ability? What stat? Uh, I would imagine con. Probably. Dex. Dexterity. Dexterity. Yeah. Okay. So that's a 15. Should be interesting. Mm. Kaboom. Ten. Twenty. Thirty. Just remember. Thirty. Don't wake up Zach. It's in the morning. He Thirty-five plus forty. Disintegrate spells. Thirty-five plus forty. Whoo. Okay. Like 75. So it's 75. still there. Yeah. Motherfucker. Uh, in fact, you're even more afraid that it's yeah, still there. But I, you do I, get to make your saving throw again, potentially. What? You do get to make your saving yeah, throw. Yeah, it's end of your turn, so you get so to So, wisdom start. saving throw? Five. You're still afraid. Just like the first time. <laughs> even more afraid than before. So, I'll push past the uh, and run down the steps. <laughs> Three paces. Okay. It will take a swing at you then as you move away from it. Was it next to me? Or yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, that's fine. You get lots yeah. of hit points. It's only a 12 to hit. Yeah, that's it. That hits. Oh. <laughs> Unarmored mage. I should hit the mages more often. This is fun. Um, let's see. 14 points of necrotic damage. Okay. Uh, so, Kazima. Okay. Well, I just saw a Zakis go winging over my head. <laughs> that was like 70 something damage. Uh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of scared crapless. So. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Sorry. I really got nothing else I can do, so I will uh, fire another uh, poisoned blowgun dart at her, because all I've got is stuff that's poisoned anyways. So. Okay. Uh, I won't <laughs> be aiming. Okay. Uh, and, ah, dang it. I would have had advantage if you'd been standing there still. Then I was, a, oh, I was you afraid have, you have and I ran away. Actually. <laughs> you have a disadvantage attack. Yeah, but it would have neutral. It would have been neutral instead. I'm next to you. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Safer space to be. Not unless I'm shooting you. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's a six plus ten is sixteen. Sixteen is a hit. So that's five damage plus ignorable poison. Yes, the, unfortunately, the poison has no effect on it. As the and piercing I, goes right through, right through her kind of face, mm-hmm. uh, again, sort of disrupting this wispy, sort of cloud-like vision that she. And I don't get my sneak attack either because I'm not. Uh, actually, that I am sense. hidden. Uh, the moment you have disadvantage, you don't get sneak attack, I believe. Yeah, as long yeah, as that's right. You disadvantage. Yep. Um, okay, uh, that is now their turn. Let's yeah, I'm not going to move anywhere, so. Well, she's like a lot. She's looking a lot worse now, at least. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> I mean, I don't think she looked very. Good first, you don't succeed. Kiss, keep trying. Oh, wait that. a minute! I gotta make my save. Oh yes. Uh, no, that's a ten. Unfortunately, not. Yep. You feel a chill as the thing once again passes through the wall and into you. Uh, please make. Actually, just let me double check first of all. 
I really hope it's a con save. No, it's a charisma save. Cool. Uh, another 16. As once again, you feel this tendrils wrapping around you, and deep within that rocky heart of yours remains that one that one thing. Uh, and it will once again get the hell out of there and just basically moving out to the wall again. Uh, let's see, it was in this direction for no particular reason. Uh, however, let's do the one that's in the moonbeam. Uh, that can't be good. Okay. A is it a save? Yes, it is. I believe it's a con save. Glomkins are just slacking. What kind of save was it, sorry? Uh, con save 16. All right, this should be bad. That's a natural one. So I don't Ooh, think it's cool. that. That's uh, 9, 12, 16, 16 of the radiant damage. Oh, okay. No, it's still standing oh. somehow. It's bizarrely still standing. Uh, let's see. Uh, but it is going to move, because that seems like a very bad place to be. Cool. Uh, and it will proceed to kind of circle around you until it tucks itself up against the wall. Cool. And attempts to attack you. Uh, 19? 20. Yeah, I figured. Uh, and because I have my shield. <laughs> through the wall. The one on the other side. Uh, I guess technically nice to move up a little closer, but the mini is obnoxiously large. <laughs> so even things that are supposed to be standing near it can't actually stand near it. But it will make a similar attack. Uh, but no. Fails completely on that attack as it sort of seems like it's shrinking away from the moonbeam and trying not to be in the moonbeam. And then proceeds to vanish beyond the wall as well. Um. Hmm. <laughs> beyond the wall is the stairwell. Yeah, that's true. Uh, which technically puts on the other stairwell. We won't worry about that for the moment. Uh, let's see. Now, where did my other guy go? There he is. Do, do, do. Hmm. those but yeah they're all going at the same time anyway it doesn't really matter do 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 this one will make a beeline around the corner we'll stand at the front of Clark and oh. attempt to scratch at the uh, that is a 17 to hit no definitely hit mm. at least hitting things again uh, that is eight necrotic damage gotcha. and a constitution saving throw. Okay, give me one sec for the thing. Uh, math. Uh, I think. And you said constitution. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. I need to roll disadvantage on those. Do I not? Because no, so, no, no okay. frightening doesn't affect okay. uh, those rolls. In that case, um, uh, seven, sixteen. 16. Yeah. Uh, despite how deeply its claws seem to move into you, it seems to leave your, your soul alone. It gives right. it a little squeeze. But about it. <laughs> um, so, uh, just to clarify something, mm -hmm. attacks of opportunity, attack the attack occurs right before the creature leaves your reach. So the ones that are going into the walls would get I mean, attacked We can get technical about it, but the, the idea is that they have this slight advantage. Um, more than slight, it means they can hide in the walls all day and we can't attack them. In a smaller room. Well, um, okay. Uh, I, I just, it, it, I, that's why if if they they get this thing, I just want to point out that that's what the reaction is supposed to be. It usually had been worded, as I've seen it before, as when they leave your your uh, range, and that by that point they've already gone behind a wall. Just like you could duck behind a wall without necessarily getting an sure. attack of opportunity. But you still see the person going like that, and so it's the, the yeah, idea But they can move of... around you without provoking an attack of opportunity, so seeing someone move is not the condition either. Oh yeah, well, because they have to be within range. Um, they have to be in your threat range to do an attack of opportunity. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't want to slow anything down here. I mean, I, I'm going to suggest that because they're incorporeal, they go incorporeal sure. at that point, and then, unless you're doing magic damage, which most yep. uh, can't do. I can. 
Uh, do you have the one that can do spells as uh, oh, no. Nope. reactions? Because okay. um, that one would definitely help. Yes, it would. Um, now that I have no more doesn't I mean, <laughs> these aren't likely to last as long as to worry about that kind of ruling anyway, but... Um, it's just not the first time that this has come up. Uh, so. no, actually, in that case, it'll stay there. This also serves as cover, essentially. Hey, friend. Uh, and then the other one. Hmm. Well, then it has nowhere to go. Um. You can go up. Yep. You can just take a little break. You know. Or go down. Actually, it can appear over here. Ooh. No. It has just enough movement to make it there. Sorry. As it sort of glides through all of you. Uh, and then appears on the other side, solidifies for a second. Uh, 23 to hit? That oh, yeah. yeah. He needed 11. I had to add it up to this way. That's uh, 9 points of necrotic damage. Another constitution saving throw. Con save is... 14. No problem, then. Again, it reaches in towards your soul, but does not find purchase. There's nothing to find. Uh, Elzara, you're up. Zach has already sold his soul for a third level spell. Zachary has, has done no such thing. Okay, so where's the door? Yeah, so where's the hag? I s- yes, so well, The thing is kind of standing in the doorway. Yeah. So this is getting moved as my action. Okay. To here. I, I've never quite understood. Is it is it uh-huh. physical? Can it pass through things that are smaller than itself? Yeah. The, the moon we, we, we We've done around corners before. Um, we've, we've ruled it that way. It's just a beam that comes down out of the... Ether. Yeah, wannabe sky. Yeah, that's coming out of the ceiling at the moment, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it's weird. So, I'm pushing it through the door because I can see some stuff there. Okay. Pretty so, nice. and so that is your my action. Action, okay. Uh, my bonus action, and by that I mean my player doing an action is changing my, my counter there for my shield. Oh. <laughs> uh, um, the players don't get bonus actions. That's that's a ridiculous. Me Only almost forgetting do. to do that thing. Um, and I believe that is all I can do. You can um, move, but I don't know if there's any reason for you at the moment. I'm going to take a step away from... No, I can't. I, I literally am stuck there. <laughs> it's pretty crowded for something that big. Yep. It's all good, though. In the future, people wonder how they built you in that space. Uh, I'm going to... The mini is you, too big. Roll pops by yeah, this mini time. is too big for this space. <laughs> Give me a second here. Uh, That's kind of on the huge scale, I think. No, it's one. it's still a large base. It's just too big for the amount of stuff that's in there. So what I'm did you going, turn into? What is that, a monkey? Oh, it's it's a medium earth elemental oh. instead of a large. But oh, I am okay. a large, so yeah. I'm just going to put myself on the corners. That's fair. So, just so that we can still see what's in the room. <laughs> yeah, I like the pretty mini. I really yeah. do. But it is, you yeah, can right find spaces, it gets kind of, kind of hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Clark, you're up. All right, uh, there's a ghost thing in front of me. Absolutely. I can't move forward, but I can certainly strike, I think. Uh, you can. You are at disadvantage, because the other thing is still within the vision. All right, let's do that then. Striking with disadvantage. Uh, 13? 13 Push. is a hit. Oh, well, that'll do they are not that dumb. All right. Uh, I need to use them. Excuse me. Kill it with your holy weapon. I will try my best. Eh, that's a two. Try it again. It's better. Okay. Um, seven regular ass damage. Uh, three radiant damage. And that is it. Okay. Uh, I guess I might have to strike again. Yeah. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Attacks. Yep. Uh, you could, except that when you strike through it, yes. it dissipates into into a shadow, which evaporates in an It's instant. dead. It's gone. Excellent. It's, well, more dead. Unfortunately. It no longer exists. You need to go through a moonbeam to get it. I can't, okay, can't get closer anyway. I can't, I can't progress anyway, so yeah. out comes a hand axe if I can. Uh, sure. Part of the movement, because I'm not going anywhere. Gotcha. Okay. Um, at disadvantage. Still at disadvantage. Uh, 20 would be nice. Uh, that would be nice. No, it'd be awful. Be, you don't want to do those. <laughs> They're overrated. I think those are gone. Clark reaches for his hand axes, and they're not where they live normally. 
Oh, you lost them in... They, they uh, were lost in a previous adventure. Ah. Um, so you throw phantom uh, axes at the Yeah, phantom so tank. he goes to reach for the thing, and he's like, Gah! <laughs> okay. forgot to pick up. Uh, um, out goes the, the sacks, then. Okay. Uh, the kitchen sink, whatever, whatever it'll do. Yeah. Uh, how about a 13? Uh, 13... Against the, the bad, big bad ghost. Ah, here. meets beats, so you hit it. Alright. Woo! In that case... Uh... As I'll keep... Excuse me? No. Please take, uh... Seven, uh, magical damage, and three radiant damage. That's easy to calculate. Okay. Yeah. As the sax flies right on through it and bounces off of the farther far wall. Okay. And but it does seem to cleave a large hole in it as it goes through. I would Isn't like to make a lady? question uh, answer a question answered. <laughs> so I didn't have to draw a new weapon because I didn't have it to draw. Right. So I still have my movement. Yay. Sure. Okay. You can draw a weapon on your turn anyway. Can I draw the glaive? Uh, you can. You would be at disadvantage for using it in a small space like this, but you're already at disadvantage. Yes, but I have reach. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. I might be able to... I think as a bonus action you can extend it, or yeah. is it... It's a reach weapon to begin with, uh, of five feet, five extra feet. And oh, okay. If, uh, yeah. Oh, right, you can extend it If I do further. things, I can get yeah. 15 feet. Right. Yeah. But we'll just use the I should know. I wrote the damn thing. That's okay. <laughs> Trust me, I don't. Uh, so that's my, that's my intent, is to try okay. to swipe at it. Uh, you see it sort of flinch a little bit when the 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 actual glaive comes out. Oh, okay. Clark can't smile. He's too afraid. <laughs> can't he smile. Would, he would, Thing will eat me. <laughs> exactly. Uh, one of these. Eight. And seven is 16. <laughs> it's tough teasing me. Eight, seven, Eight and seven is 15. 15. But that is enough to hit. All right. Please take uh, ten magical damage. Okay, as you see, oh, give me the whole uh, damage here. <laughs> yep, ten magical damage and three more, so thirteen magical damage. What was the three more from? Necrotic. It ignores that. Oh well, oh. I tried. Uh, however, you do see the the glaive cut a very large scar throughout it. And this time, unlike the other weapons that you've seen before, which will disrupt the pattern, mm -hmm. this one seems to remain a visible scar cutting right through it. Okay. It is not down. Is that the creepy lady? Or? Yes. Okay. Uh, it is not down, but it's not happy. Uh, you do get to make your save at the end. Yep, certainly. To become non-frightened. I would like that. Uh, try this. You... And wisdom, you said. Uh, where are you here? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. yes. 13 is my number. Meets beats right on the dot. Woo! So uh, you find yourself, after that that motion of cleaving it through, there's some strength that seems to be gathering from the weapon itself. Hooray! It kind of flashes shadow, if you will. Oh. Uh, and you kind of feel a purpose. Gotta watch those shadow flashes. Indeed. So at the beginning of this turn, let's see how bad this gets. 16 can save, please. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, no problem with the con save. Cool. So that is 8, 11, 16, divided by 2 on a success. Okay. Radiant. That's that's frighteningly close to not as many as I want. All right. It still has an action. Woo! <laughs> uh, so, and not by a lot. Well, I'm <laughs> not the first person there, so I'm okay. <laughs> I'm in the uh, room, I'm fine. It dives toward Clark. Yeah. And as it does so, its mouth elongates in a way that's entirely unnatural. It now transforming from the visage of a living being that once once uh, had held breath now to a creature for which breath comes from some terrible demiplane of evil oh. as it lets forth a terrible scream. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Here comes the Everyone picture. make a constitution saving throw. Oh, no. 20. Ooh. Non-natural, but 20. Ooh. Ooh. Some of those are noises. And you, you still have inspiration, right? I get three. Yeah. Three? Because you didn't okay. use it pranking me? 
Was... Are you, aren't you glad you didn't use your, your inspiration to prank me? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> priorities, I mean, priorities. No, nope, I rolled another three. Five. <laughs> so it's eight. <laughs> so here's what it happens. Uh, you got a 20. What did you get total? Uh... 23. 23. Yeah. Okay. As you, this thing in your face uh, screams at you, and now you have found your resolve, your strong and strength. Uh, you who've kind of gone around the corner going, no, no, things are going to eat me. Things are going to eat me. They're still going to eat me. Both of you, however, uh, instinctively just sort of grip down tight on your mind and allow this to pass through you. But beside, between the two of you, I'm not eating. you see Kuzaima fall to the ground, lifeless. Inside, you fall to the ground, lifeless. You're both at mm -hmm. zero hit points. Yep. Now, the rest of you take 11 points of psychic damage. Jesus. And that is its. I will have it move. I will have a. Uh, actually, that's gone now. Yep. Uh, Woohoo! And. I'm the static. Hmm. Now, what is the specific wording of that ability? On a failure, the creature drops to zero hit points. Cool. So I thought of my form. <laughs> At zero hit points now. Because it affected you. Uh, it is one of those yep. weird ones. It's where one of those other, ones yeah. that that's what happens with druids. It's that it falls yeah. to zero hit points. The, yeah. Uh, the, well, the official the, ruling on it, because it's similar for one, uh, one of the other instant death ones, is that technically the form falls to zero and you die. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter what form you're in. However, the intention was that the druid's current form drops to zero, and then the druid pops back. Hmm. Be because uh, what so happens it, in... There's yeah. a lot, but there's it, a lot it, of ablativeness to, to, to druids to. that's a little bit overpowered yeah. for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the idea in this case was that the, the, the effect is all... It, they can't word mm -hmm. it this way, but all of your hit points go away. Mm -hmm. So when yeah. you change forms, all of those hit points well, go away. Yeah, you die of yeah. fear. Is um, the, yeah. The thing. Uh, so yeah, whichever way you want to... By the uh, by, strict rulings, yes, they drop to zero and that's it. By game designer intent, they said, "Well, we meant it to go this way, yeah. but the rules say go that way." So um, it's, it's a devastating enough hit that I'm just going to say yep. you're popped back to your form. Okay, because um, it is 136 hit points that I've got. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it, it's it's weird because technically, you know, the, a big massive dragon can still fail to this. Yeah. but they have other sure. things that allow them to not fail saving throws. So. Yeah. I so, still have something. so yeah, just the wording of wild form, shape can, uh, specifically is. I'm pretty that. sure that you can't roll uh, an 80 on your save to keep the spell up, though. So that's yeah. still going to go away. Yeah. Um, but you're popped out of your form as this this resonance kind of goes around the hallways uh, in terrifying ways. Uh, that's its turn, Zakis. You have seen. Uh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Uh, this guy falls prone. Panic again. Sort of, not, not that <laughs> What are you doing? Appropriate. What kind of, what kind of a thing are you doing? Uh, Magic missile level four, towards whatever just yelled at me and like is already making me scared anyway. Okay. Are um, you fucking shitting me? That's a lot of ones. Mm. I still have two tiny servants. <laughs> um, they're immune to psychic damage, frightened, uh, and such. Do they need to roll against that? If they have any sentience, which they've kind of just demonstrated so far, then yes. They, they have an be. int of two, which makes it animal intelligence. Uh, since it's a constitution saving throw, I'd say that, uh, yeah, they're unfortunately going to have to make the same roll. Okay, I'm just wondering if the immunity to frightened uh, means... It's that... not a frightening effect. Okay. It literally is just a psychic effect. Ooh, one got a natural 20. Okay. So I have one left. Okay. The other one just sort of Deanimates essentially and falls to, yeah, falls to. Pro Actually, sorry, the other one takes eleven points of psychic damage. Because okay, you succeed, you take gone. that. I know it's immune to psychic. Okay, then that does back and forth. This poor little thing. Seventeen force. Uh, Can you confirm that level four magic missile is seventeen force? Because I know you do math better than I do. Uh, I think it's sixteen. What? Four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven plus five is sixteen. Uh, no, sorry, six. Yep, yeah, seventeen. It takes okay. 17 force, force damage. As you kind of lean around the corner a little, you're, you're not really concealed from it anyway. The corner's not that big. Uh, and let, let force this fury as how many bolts? Uh, 
Four. No. Six. Six. Yes. Six bolts. All kind of go, tum, 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 uh, reducing and separating. You see that 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 ridge that was created from uh, Clark's hit just sort of start uh, start widening and separating. And once again, it lets out a tremendous wail, and then vanishes. Is it dead? It is, seems to be gone. Ooh. Uh, uh, Kuzima. Dang it. Can I move or do a bonus action? Uh, you can move and do a bonus action. This doesn't uh -huh. change his roll. Okay. Um, what was the uh, failed save? Okay. I was gonna so, like try to stabilize your Yeah, uh, that's an action. Okay. Yep. Um, however, uh, the dolls have now been attacked. Uh, mm -hmm. They can defend themselves, mm -hmm. but the only thing they can do the thing that attacked them is gone. Yep. But uh, they they have blind sense, so they can sense all the other things that are in there. Okay. Can my doll run in and bait on one? Uh, your doll can't get to anything. Uh, it's got thirty feet of movement. I mean, unless it goes downward, but it can't it can't sense the others. Well, there's one back here on the stairs. Mm -hmm. That's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah? Then it can just go run over and it'll beat on okay. its ghostly ankle. And they're small enough, I'm not going to worry about them trying to move around. But they're moving around Zacchaeus' ankles. <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. Hey, I can close a tab. That's pretty cool. Where do we go? Okay. That's a 15 to hit. That hits. That's four blunt damage. Okay. That. So actually, really? Oh yeah, that guy isn't. So yes, there we go. Uh, now let's see. Oh, I can also technically get rid of this. It's no shock. He's actually dead. Didn't just disappear. That would be cool. Again. Maybe. <laughs> True enough. True enough. Uh, well, let's see. It's their turn, and Zach has run away. Uh, oh. So, uh, well, let's have the two of them converge. Having heard their master's call, they converge inward once more. The muppets torch over and the walls fly over. And the thing is chaos for moments. Well, uh, as the two of them will attempt to reach out to the now humanoid form of this crazy thing in front of them, and he does not hit. Nope. Have a bad roll. Bad die, bad. Uh, 20 does hit. 20 does hit now. 20 does hit. Ooh. Uh, for 15 necrotic damage, and make a constitution saving throw. Cool. Uh, Ten. Uh, meets beats. About as close as it gets, mind you. But yes, you feel your soul shredding away, and the memory that you've been holding on to twists and turns, and yet there's still a sliver, focusing in on just his face alone. Uh, let's see. That's pretty much all they can do from there. And the other one will attack Zacchaeus. Oh, no. So Zacchaeus dies. No. Oh, wait, he's here. Okay. Zacchaeus had to pee. <laughs> in the middle of combat, Zacchaeus can... Really? Uh, bonus action. 23 hit. <laughs> oh, bonus action. Oh, 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 yeah. Zacchaeus probably <laughs> dies. Um... Yeah, not nearly as bad. Nine necrotic damage and a constitution saving throw. Wait. Hey, and Harry Potter, Zacchaeus would just drop trial and go right here. I'm not sure how 15, that's a Harry Potter 17, thing. 17, 17. Oh, it's a canon thing according to J.K. Yep. Rowling. 17. Before they brought in plumbing, one of the few uh, muggle things that the wizards ever brought in, they just uh, take a, a poop wherever they were and vanish oh, it away. I do vaguely remember what? something about that. Yep. She just had a lot of weird things about that series. She, she needs to just be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> well, Zacchaeus is <laughs> fine. fine. Zacchaeus has two HP, but otherwise he's fine. Um, <laughs> hmm. yeah, it's more HP than I got. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Let's, is let's it that one that hit me? Or? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now for the other one. Let's see if its tricks come back. No. Those tricks. It's if, kind of annoying. If I die, have my tiny servant bury me somewhere outside. <laughs> we can't get outside anymore, dude. There's like vines and shit. Advantage, you won't have to do much work to bury him. Uh huh. We're already all buried. Actually, I think. Yes, I'm just uh, small enough that my weight is underneath the weight of what the tiny Once servant again, can this lift. One. 
So the tiny servant can actually full, lift me up and carry me around. The full body, what? Yeah. The full bodied uh, apparition uh, once again comes charging at you. Uh, hopefully, and you threw that off, so you're okay there. Oh, not twenty. That's kind of fun. Oh no! I haven't done one of those in ages. Well, as it reaches out with its claw and scrapes across Elzara's uh, uh, body, you take thirty-three points of necrotic damage. Yeah. And with some satisfaction, it looks deep into your eyes, and you can almost tell as if it's—it's it's almost like it's reading that memory and just, just salivating at the idea of consuming it. But for now, uh, it's Elzara's turn. Hello. <laughs> oh shit. Well, right. Uh, I have this thing in my face. I don't like this thing being in my face. Technically, there are three things in your face. Um. Hmm. <sighs> Given that you have the scariest face in some ways. Only if it's a bear. Okay. Um. I know what that thing did to me. Um. Which thing in particular? The thing that <laughs> dropped me out of my form. Ah, yes. That's gone. It's That's gone, though. I, yes, I'm aware. Okay. Uh, but I know what is needed for that to happen. Okay. Um, so I am going to, um, everyone is in within 30 feet of me, correct? As long as it's not line of sight. It is not. Mm. It is a, within a point centered on okay. 30 feet. Ooh. Then yes, um, you can capture all the NPC, or all the PCs in your blast radius. All of the PCs <laughs> are going to, uh, heal 3d8 plus... Do you have to target What's this them? from? Uh, mask your wounds. Uh, yeah. Nice. Choose yeah. up to, to up to six creatures mm -hmm. in a thirty foot radius sphere centered on a point of my choosing. Where's the dryad? Um, let me just check on that because that's here. a little bit weird. No, I got it right here. That's it. Yeah. I just kind of. Um, so you have to see the point. Yes. That mm -hmm. you're going to choose. That'd be the one thing there. I think. Yeah. Just yeah. She, she can place it at her feet and it would uh, still hit all. No, of it wouldn't. Yeah. Um. No, oh, sorry, if it's a 30-foot radius, yeah, yeah, you can still catch everybody. Yep. yep. Uh, okay. Um, where did my other D8 go? That's a weird one. It's not often that it will move through walls and stuff. Yeah. Heal walls. Yeah. Woo. Yep. So, level 5 spell we go. Uh, that is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, because I rolled shit, plus 4, so 15. Okay. Everyone heals 15. Woo! Is that actually, with your spell casting? Yes. That's another so, hit I can take. Because I'm a. I rolled Blake's. 11 on the dice. Uh, um, so, that Besides is a thing. Because I'm asleep is, is, is broken. Um, so, that is my action. And. I can do nothing as a bonus action, I believe. Um, just give me a second. Right, that's reaction, bonus action. Yeah, nope, that is what I do. As a as a wave of blue energy kind of starts from you and just washes Mine is more out of a over, greenish teal. Green energy washes out over the area. I you ain't no Poloxy. You emerge from the, the walls weirdly as if the walls themselves are sending you happy healing thoughts. Thoughts and prayers. But, Kuzama, uh, you aren't you haven't stood up yet, but you have uh, mm -hmm. you have woken. Uh, so you're done your turn? Yeah. Okay. There's Clark. A, there's a thing next to me. Uh, I would like to do a thing. Excellent. Clark is going to You try the thing and it works. Clark is going to uh, expend a charge. Oh dear. His glaive. Whoop whoop. Uh, I believe that's free. Uh, then he will move towards uh, his downed uh, sacks. And okay. Retrieve it. Okay. So it's basically on the so other side of the door. So I'm assuming it's here-ish. Yep. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's one, two. I can do two more of those. Uh, is there any trouble picking it up? Not at all. Okay. And then three. The more awkwardness is actually the glaive itself. And then four. Not a problem. Okay. Uh, dun, 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 okay. <clears throat> glaive is doing extra damage, but not extra range. So okay. I'll leave it at so that. you activated its additional yep. ability. The the shadow waves around the blade start to uh, twist and turn into a sawtooth saw pattern. 
as if ready and willing to consume. Okay. Uh, as a note, uh, probably has no mechanical effect, but it has been overcharged now. It, it it's had, over ten. It had three charges with mm -hmm. its capacity of three, and then I could have gained a fourth if I could have. It's the first time it's happened. I thought I'll let you know. Um, and there's nothing. Uh, there's nothing specific in that. Uh, when did the out. fourth one come in? Oh, uh, we killed the bad. The but you didn't kill it. It's okay. It died. And I had laid steel to it. Oh, I thought it, I thought it said when you killed it. I should know. I wrote the thing, but I don't remember. Uh, okay. All right. it just, it's just, it's just, basically, just, it washes over. That, it can't be fine. overcharged. That's all right. Um, that's part of the, the, that's the why idea. I'm spending them now. <laughs> uh, Zacchaeus. So I can earn some more. <laughs> is it whatever the fuck this that's is? That's right there beside you. Well, that's uh, the White still, Walkers have come, and it's ready. Am to Am I still consume. feared, by the way? Or? No, the thing is gone. Okay. You can't be afraid of things that aren't there. Well, you could. Well, there, there's a thing that's there, and it, even though it didn't cast fear on me, it's still scary because I'm not doing so hot, like physically. So I will cast a level three magic missile at it. <laughs> wow, the level three did yeah. so much more damage than the level four. All right, and that one is Thank that guy. So 15 plus five, so 20. Mm -hmm. 20, nasty. Ooh. Um, Oh, yeah. Did I kill the thing? Uh, no, but it is definitely not looking good. Uh, as the magic missiles all sort of converge and then just explode outward to it. And you can see its form now is ragged, where it was, uh, yeah, where it was kind of ragged from the from the, the, the waist down. Now you can see that its shoulders are, are, are <laughs> nearly dissipated as well. That's right. Uh, Kuzaima. Then I realize I, I should run away, because I'll get hit. Um... Okay. Well, yeah, I'm just trying to think. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's the gold. I come out of the gold. shadows, <laughs> and uh, I, I punch Zacchaeus in the nuts as they come past. <laughs> <laughs> or you can just say, excuse me, and I, didn't, and, I, and I move over, you know? Well, I'm two feet tall. I usually don't have to bother. I just go past You can't gold. share a space with an enemy. I'm not. There's a square there, and there's a square there. Uh, it's two per. One of them should be a two-foot square, really. So, looking at it, there's a square right here, mm -hmm. and there's a square right there that's bisected by a wall. Yeah, yeah. that's definitely okay. two feet. I mean, that's a I'm a tiny little guy. If I can't get there, then I'll leave Zach as no, that's all right. Else. Zach is will yeah. die on his own anyway, so yeah. it'll be fine. Uh, there aren't any, any and, spell books. I can't type. Uh, <laughs> I come out of the darkness and stab it with a silver dagger. Ooh. Oh, look at that! There's a people nearby. So I get advantage. Hey. I'll take the 15. Um, you're uh, invisible but not hidden. Um, Which yeah. actually means it's a disadvantage to see if it notices you. Well, it's also an advantage for me to attack it. Uh, if you're uh, yeah, if you're invisible, I get you get advantage to attack things. All right. Um, some weird crossovers there. And the advantage is actually from him being next to it, too. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, dagger. Yes, that's a twenty-three to hit because I'm <laughs> yeah. going hand to hand. Uh, and it's d4 plus four plus d6. Ooh, thirteen. And that is what kind of damage? Silver Stabby dagger, damage. but not uh, not magic, right? Nope, I don't have any magic. Not for attacks. It does, however, have a pretty nasty effect. Is now the only thing that really remains corporeal, corporeal or, or, or coherent is the very front of its face. Even the outsides of its of its uh, head are now shaken, uh, and the very ends of its hands. The rest of it seems to be nearly dissipated at this point. Uh, that was Kuzaima. Oh, they get a turn. They still have oh. one more turn. Nope, my uh, my minion attacks it too. Oh, right. <laughs> Eight. It's got a 20 to hit. <laughs> yeah, that hits. And it I, I'd be disappointed if it kills it. Does uh, five non magical blunt damage to it. <sighs> Pretty damn close, though. <laughs> As the little thing goes. <laughs> <laughs> it climbs up off of me and just jumps up and goes pop and then lands. <laughs> <laughs> flies right through it. All right, well, it did somehow survive. That's good. Um, nope. <laughs> 
it will turn its attention to you as you would almost sure. respond to attack it and try uh, desperately. Mm, yeah, try desperately. Oh, that's a 23 to hit. That's less desperate than I thought it would be. Mm. Uh, yep, that hits. Okay. I'm not going to do anything. Um, for 10 points of necrotic damage and a constitution saving throw. That knocks me to 5 and I fail the con save. So you with lose... A six. Uh, what did I say? It was 10 points of damage? Ouch. So that's 10 points off your maximum hit points. Okay. Uh, that's its go. It's just desperately trying to fight. Well, let's see. The other two, two, uh, yes, two of them are surrounding Elzara. Look at that. Well, Oof. three of them, yeah. Well, I have plans for the third. Uh, so I don't think a 10 hits you, but I'm pretty sure 23 hits you. Yes. Uh, where are you here? I think it's, uh... Oh, I've been... Have I not been rolling high enough for that? No, that's okay. Uh, so yes, one of them hits you. Uh, for ten points of necrotic damage and another Constitution saving throw. Ten. Meat speeds. Keep rolling. <laughs> You're trying to get right on that edge, right on that edge. As you feel the uh, the feeling of it. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, let's see if that one gets success back. Oh, look at that. This should be fun. Uh, so, moving incorporeally, the large one moves right straight on through you and dives at Clark. Actually, it doesn't even have to move. It's actually within sight. Uh, so, Clark has to make a... Where are you here? Charisma saving throw. Ah, we'll that. Uh, three. No. Three. Excuse me. Four. As the, as the ghost's eyes lock with yours and you feel yourself shoved aside for a moment. Uh oh. And the ghost disappears. Uh, that's From me or from everyone else? It's, it's no longer physically mm -hmm. on the board. That's what I figured. Um, Guess who just charged up all his power attacks, yep. everybody? Uh -oh. uh, let's see. That is its turn. Elzera. Hello. You see the ghost in front of you stare beyond you and then vanish. Um, well, I have two other things near me. Um, what I, I, I had cast that, okay, so, forgot what I had cast for a second. Um, I am going to, these guys didn't seem to like the Radiant, correct? It was not their friend. Cool. Um, well then, more Radiant should be a solution to, to my issue right now. <laughs> um, I am going to... So I'm going to put it, uh, which one looks less hurt? Um, I'm going to put it on that one. Probably the axe guy? I think the axe guy is the one that I got before. Frankly, they're both kind of looking yeah, bad. Clark at the shield guy. Actually, the sword guy would be the better of the two. Okay. So, Moonbeam, level three on sword guy. And um, the roll top desk. First. Can destroy if there's any books, don't destroy them. Destroying the desk. I'm pretty sure there aren't any books here. Otherwise, we've been reading off the yeah. remains of the last. All book. right, Clark. Yeah. Uh, it's does not to, move. It's time to kill everybody. No. Let's do it. Go, Clark. Yeah. Uh, Clark stands there dumbfounded. Zacchus. Yeah. It specifies a creature, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Jeremy's almost dead, so I'll cast level one magic missile to finish him off. All right. Eleven. How is that higher than the previous one? Yes, as it dissipates now, you kind of uh, target both of the eyes and they just sort of pull the whole thing apart and it is gone. Uh, That's right. And I'll there's move. a little candle with the arms down there going. <laughs> <laughs> one, two. Oh, hey, Clark. Oh, what do I see? 
Uh, you see two of them standing beside uh, Elzera. Okay. Well, Some hopefully they can get to that. <laughs> hopefully they can take down Elzera. I've always hated that. No, mate. No. You use force against the things. <laughs> Who use has force, force damage? <laughs> use the force. I do. Just delay them and they'll can shoot them. All right. All right. Uh, Kuzima. There's a lot of talk of, of Jedi here. What's going on? Uh, well... One, two, three, four, uh, five, six. Do I get attack of opportunity? Uh, you do By not. Mr. Possessed. Possessed. Okay. Did, did I notice if anything was like off with Claire? I would feel bad if you nope. did. Okay. Do Seven. I get to make a roll? I don't know. Nope. Uh, He's looking that way. You don't know. How high is that slab? <laughs> um... Mm-hmm. The torture table. Uh, at that end, it's the it's the high end, so it would be about uh, seven feet up. Okay. In that case, I don't attack anything because I cannot see anything. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I will make a roll to hide, however. Go for it. Uh, Twenty-two. Okay. As far as you know, you're hidden. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. So let's let's see how badly this thing does. What is the Constitution saving throw for the thing in the uh, in the light? Yep. Yes. Uh, that's remarkably high at eleven. Eleven? Yeah. Still fail. Uh, -huh. uh fourteen. Much, uh, yeah, no, that kills him. So. <laughs> <laughs> he was not that that well off. So we want to take that one off of the board. Uh, the one, the one with the in, the, in the beam. The, the one with the shield. This one? Yeah. Yep. Uh, and the other one will attempt to make... Oh. Also, this is in the square, because it's slightly slower than I am. <laughs> it's just following me. Uh, an 18 does hit you. Yes. The other one uh, does That square. one will leave up just because it's the one possessed. 11 him, points so of necrotic damage. And again, a constitution save. So go ahead and roll your 10. And get it over with. No, no, no. I rolled a 17. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as your soul seems firmly intact at this happy, warm memory. Very, very happy. All right. Hmm. Clark takes a half step forward, then whirls around with the glaive and strikes Zacchaeus. Take him out! Whoa! Do I get to save no, it's against he, gets your AC. To, he gets to it's make an, an attack. attack roll. Please roll low. I don't think I might hit you. Uh, let's see, sax. Glaive. Yeah, yeah, I have 11. Okay. The glaive. Yeah, yeah, I got you. 17 okay. for the glaive. Yeah, how much damage? Uh, we'll see. One moment. Now you roll damage. Uh, now you roll low, hopefully, right? Well, I've, I got a booster on right now, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he powered, <laughs> Straight he powered up his he damage make bonus and then get possessed. If you can, like, yes. not steal my soul, that'd be great. That'd be great. <laughs> Uh, That's a two, isn't it? I have to roll that. No. You don't have to. I think I have to. I'm trying. No, hard. I think you can. I'm you, trying hard. You can roll lower. I only rolled a four. Uh, actually, uh, you, no, you, you don't re-roll it. It doesn't access your class feature, okay. so it actually doesn't get that. Uh, two plus uh, four is six. Okay. Plus three more necrotics, so nine. Nine. Uh, hey. How many attacks do you have around? Two. 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 Attack number two. Yeah. That's a what? Uh, that's a crit. Oh, oh well, fuck. I'm pretty dead. <laughs> I'm pretty dead. Uh, this is what happens when your friends are used as weapons. Thanks for coming, Jody. Hey, no problem. Appreciate it. Oh, all right. uh, uh, I killed all these things, so you guys can just call me. Jody, Jody will have gotten I two have or three left. kills. <laughs> One of them was Zach, it's fine. 16 slashies. Uh, and three more necrotics. I'm at zero because I got eight HP left. So remember, all the dice are doubled. Yeah, so the necrotic one too. Oh, excuse me. So 19 plus. Uh, another four more is 23. You can stop counting. I'm at zero. <laughs> <laughs> um, Unless you can get to 74, so then my, I'm not dead. Uh, yes. I, have, I have a bonus action. Am I to uh, use it? Interesting question. Because that's a class feature for me. Yeah, no, it wouldn't be. It, it, it would have the multiple attacks, but not the uh, not the bonus attack. Okay. 
Uh, however, you would move satisfying, satisfied to uh, where Elzera is. Okay. And Striker? Um, you don't have another attack left, I don't think, right? I do if I knock someone to zero. Uh, but that's a that's class, a class feature. So. Okay. <laughs> Uh, which is, yeah, kind of crazy. I kind of wish I could use all your fancy toys, but... Go get him! Actually, you'll stand over uh, Zacchaeus' body, sure. ready to claim it. Excellent. However, um, there is a... There is a glimmer of hope as you get to, get to, make, a, get to make a roll. Oh, okay. Well. Uh, you get to make a Christmas saving throw. Unlikely. <laughs> Not with a eight, so it'd okay. be ten. So from within your own body, Clark, yes, you can see yourself moving, and it's distant, as though you're looking down a long tunnel. Okay. Part of you is going, but wait, I could hit him like three more times. It would be no problem. And then part of you is going, I should probably not do that or tell this thing that I can do that. Oh, okay. As you feel yourself shoved aside in your own body. All right. Uh, that is its turn. Elzera. Hello. Um, you hear probably a <clears throat> from behind you. Cool. Um, I'm gonna move my moonbeam. All right. Uh, probably go. on him and not on me. <laughs> Around to the guy behind me. To uh, Clark and uh, Zach. To the X Men. Oh, okay. Um, yep, that's your action. Did you want to take a move or anything else? Um, right now. Oh, shit. What? The extra damage. Add three more, six more damage. So the, the, no, it, it, still it doesn't yeah. bring him. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's you only have to do eight. It was like a low, you're, really low hanging. You're fruit. even downer than you were before. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, so sorry. Did you want to move or bonus? Uh, that was my action. I am going to. Um, Zacchaeus is down. I can actually because that is. It's okay though. Clark's taking care of him. Yeah, that'd mm -hmm. <laughs> be fine. I, I have faith in Clark's medical abilities. So um, chest compressions. Yeah, he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, stay alive, stay alive. That's right. Um, there needs to be a D&D &D equivalent song, though. Uh, Slaying alive or something. That's the same so what, what are you doing? I, I, Healing word. Okay. Three. To whom? Four. Seven, eleven, Woo. fifteen to him. Oof, there you go. Hey, you get more targets. This is great. Uh, uh, as your eyes attack. awaken with uh, with uh, Clark standing over you menacingly, Mother. apparently he just brought you back so he can kill you again. You knew this was coming that very moment. Just fell magic on Clark. Level three. Okay. I uh, don't think it's your turn yet. It is actually right now. Oh, it is? <laughs> it literally <laughs> is right now. Because it's Elzera, Clark has no turn, and then Zach Oh, uh, okay. Uh, you cast a spell magic furiously. <laughs> There's no visible effect. Uh, really what about on the glaive? Hmm? Uh, I think you'd have to target the glaive. You'd have to target the glaive, yeah. yeah. It, otherwise, dispel magic gets really, really powerful. No. I dispel all of your magic items. Roll with them. No, like, whatever, like, is possessing, because... I'm assuming I can figure out like Clark would not like you know try to kill. It doesn't him. seem in, in character for him. Yeah, and that, but I mean, whatever charming effect, there's no visible effect that you know of. Okay. So you no, cast I'll, your spell successfully. I'll just cast it at him, cast it at him at his mind, oh. and hopefully whatever is in there like. It's Are you going out. to move or otherwise do a bonus action? Well, if I move, he gets to strike me down again. So. Not necessarily. In fact, his face looks calm and clear, and he blinks. Then I'll like kind of <laughs> roll over to the he side and uh, walk. Away. No, that's like, him actually. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So half half motion to stand up. Yeah. Fuck, man. <laughs> and I'll stand up. <laughs> okay. Is that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Kuzima. Uh. Well, well, hidden. You saw the strike that came from Clark, but you also saw yeah. him cast a spell and stand up. Okay. So. They're just playing. They do this. Uh, yeah, no, they don't. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I tell my minion to go... Uh, no, she's got the beam down. Never mind. Um, go that way, minion. <laughs> 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 Whoops, the wrong way. My bad. Well, Left and right, they can never tell them apart. Uh, they can stand me up. I'm, I'm right there. Yeah. Yeah. 
My minion's gonna come over and try to pin down his toes. <laughs> uh, grapple. All right. That's um, curious. It's just aiding me on my attack roll. Not that I need it. Oh, he's I see. Next okay. To it anyways, so you are attacking Clark. On Clark. Yes. So clearly another one has turned. Uh, I go, guys. <laughs> uh, now, uh, okay. I'm not using the damage enhancement. Uh, can I choose to do less damage with an attack? No. Okay. Uh, the only thing you can do is uh, do essentially knockout damage, but you can't really do that with piercing weapons. Mm. Um, could I choose not to apply my dexterity bonus to my damage? <laughs> no. Okay. That's fine. Uh, let's see. Do your worst. He can take it. He's fine. Yep. Okay, that's a 24 to hit. Oh, that'll hit. Oh. Uh, it is 5 piercing damage. Got it. And it's one of the ones that was co coated in that sleep potion stuff that we had. Okay. Hmm. I'll need to do a check for that then, I assume. The stuff that just a taste of it almost put me out. Oh, that's the that's the carpenter's that, poison. Yes. Okay. The, that's the, important. This will make you sleep massively. Thing. That's interesting. It wasn't actually a sleep thing, but that's okay. Hmm. Oh, and I tried it. It tried it. Uh, tried to knock me out. For so. sure. I'm sure. <laughs> that, that was not the state of death. Clark just <laughs> jaw shows a blade and kills people. <laughs> Um, this will be interesting. It might not be the effect you think it is, but make a constitution saving throw. I would love to. Uh, Twelve. Twelve? Uh, yeah. You feel the, uh, well, you're aware of the outer edges of your body going numb. Right. It's like my arm. It's great. So now, uh, let's, what, what does this dastardly save once more uh, for your oh, moonbeam? I have another uh, thing. Oh, you have another arc? Okay. Oh, wait, no, no, never mind. I forgot I don't have any spell slots. Okay. Never mind. So, I'm pretty sure whatever I just rolled did not matter. <laughs> uh, oh. I, no. Shoot, that's an action. Because anyway. they're, they're not that strong against this particular effect. Fifteen. Fifteen? Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> bye bye. Gone. Is poof. So, the other one that was on the other side of Elzara has now vanished. Gone. This one? Yeah. yeah. Moonbeam is still there. Alright. Like here? Uh, uh, one, two, that way, yeah. Yeah. You're still like this motherfucker that's possessing Clark. Or, or mm -hmm. so, is he out now because I nope. dispelled? Nope. So, um, Clark uh, had this clarity of vision for a moment when you cast that spell. Mm -hmm. He shook his head. Then, thunk, a dart comes flying along. Well, probably this, no. cheek, this cheek, actually. Mm -hmm. And you can see him kind of shaking. Um, and then um, he looks uh, back over his shoulder towards Kuzima and then swings with the glaive in your direction. So you're like so roll an attack, but sure. it's controlling Clark again, which is like what you were complaining about to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> Disadvantage. Uh, that's not great. Um, uh, Twenty. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> uh, now the now the high numbers are coming out. Uh, well, at least it wasn't a crit. Yeah, that's true. I, am I? Yeah, I'm not taking extra. Yeah, okay. I'm not changing dice this time. Yeah. Uh, so six damage. Some bit necrotic. Um, don't forget, there's the bonus necrotic damage. So you char charge yes, up the weapon. Yes, and another three. So nine necrotic. Well, nine with necrotic next in. Yeah. I don't think nine damage. Like the restrictions or yeah, I don't think it matters. Are you still standing? Yes. Okay. Then you take a second attack. Okay. Kacha. That's a little bit better. Uh, Eleven. Meets. Doesn't do yep, that hits. Oh. Mine? Yeah. 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 Yep, yeah, oh, yeah. You took nine. You took nine damage oh. from the first. That was me. I thought it was you. No, no, no. No, he looked at he me. Looked, and he looked at Kazima and then went back after you. Wait, he's right oh. there. Uh, so. Six, seven, eight, uh, nine, ten, eleven. Is that on me again? Yep. Eleven with necrotic mixed in. God damn it. Well, it's like zero regardless. <laughs> so do you go down? Yeah. Okay. I tried. <laughs> I know you did. You saved um, me a turn. <laughs> and once again, this time, uh, actually, as you go down, it moves over here, effectively blocking you in. Well, not quite blocking you in, actually. Hey, he's got a um, small candle attempting to hold his foot down. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't seem to be paying attention to the candle. Ah! Uh, Elzera. Hello. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Clark. It's fine. Do your thing. So the moon beam's going over. So shiny. Okay. 
Uh, and I'm gonna back up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. uh, I've noticed. Uh, That's your move I'm and your action. Move action. Moonbeam doesn't that like reveal things that are like shape shifted. Uh -huh. Shape shifters. Would it show the thing. That's nope. Not it's not shape shifting. Clark's been a halfling all this time. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> he's wearing. Why the, he's so slow. <laughs> he's wearing the other hat of disguise. So so it's a dwarven half orc and a, and a halfling half orc. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. Um, that's my action. That's. And you move. My move. Um. I think I have a potion of healing. I don't have any more dispels. <laughs> it, it, dispel wouldn't work. Okay. God damn it. I mean, it almost worked, maybe. Yeah. And then he was struck again. It's like, wow. Well, <laughs> Or not. Potion, potion, Actually, potion. sorry, at the end of that turn, you do get to make another Christmas saving throw. Okay. Mm hmm. Uh, this should be fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, 17. Mm -hmm. okay. I have a potion of healing. That's I'm going to take a potion of healing. Okay. Four, five, six, seven. Cool. Okay. I have healed seven. Um, as you move the moonbeam over, you see Clark shake and shudder uh, as the thing emerges from it. However, that does mean both Clark and it will have to make the saving throw, right. as well as your miniature doll. Well, I thought it broke away from the miniature doll. I thought he was carrying it. That's why you described it. Uh, well, no, I it was just trying to cling to his foot. Okay. Um, so... What is the saving throw for this one? Uh, 16 con. Con. Ooh. That is a success on the save. Which well, that's is nice. 20 damage. Ooh. And, uh, yeah, it's none of those. All right. Ooh. I fail. You fail? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 20. 20? 20? 20 radiant oh, damage. Oh, success is half? Success is half. Uh, as it sort of explodes, and you see, uh, shockingly, that Clark has somehow retained himself. Um, How could you tell? Well, I mean, other than that, he's just got a different thing. He's so violent him. normally. Uh, however, uh, Clark, you do have your actions back. Oh, all right. You have managed to pierce the veil. Okay. Sorry, uh, yeah. And you can actually feel that you did not do that. Do what? You but the, did. But the glaive shoved you forward. You can feel its energy presence there. Okay. Well, let's redirect it, shall we? All right, then. Let's kill this ghost. Shall we do this? Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Does he still have disadvantage because of the poison? He does. No. Good. Good. Sorry. Right. No, good, good point. Fine. You are kind of tripping balls. Uh, <laughs> not for one. Oh. <laughs> Unfortunately, you swing, and the, the glaive catches on the edge of the bench. Yeah, it's only just constricted space. That's I believe your... you, you would still get your second attack, no? Uh, mm -hmm. No, and it's a, it's a botch. It's a one, right? Oh. That's uh, how and that how usually you... ends the, the, the actions. You still have your bonus, potentially, or move. Yeah. Um, I don't play however, character with extra being, attack. Being kind of slightly woken up, you're, yeah. you're uh, there. <laughs> you do still feel the beam all around you, weirdly enough. Sorry. Let's move then. Okay. That sounds like it might be painful. You could push through. Um, well, it's corporeal at the moment. You could yeah. push through where, um, where Kuzima is. Yeah, you could just step over me. Yeah. Uh. It is a bit narrowed there, but he's small. I can also move it on my next turn because you're not going to. Yep. Yeah. I'm happy to drift this way towards the the old doll, if that's all right. Uh, well, I couldn't fit it there, but that's actually where the thing is supposed to be standing. I, I couldn't fit it on the floor. Okay. Um, yeah, you know what? I'll leave it there. So okay. you, you can move one. You can move that way if you want to. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you move ten feet that way, anyways, you're out of it. Yeah. So it does ten. do an attack. I'm pretty. The doll is not taking up a square. Um, so we'll take a, a slash with its withering touch. For sure. Uh, that is a sixteen. Dead. That'll hit. For 14 necrotic damage. Okay. Ouch. Uh, as it kind of catches you as you're moving by, and you can kind of feel the back of uh, the back of your shoulder just sort of pulling out, extending, extruding in pain. Mm. 
but then the pain turns into these little, tiny little explosions and rainbows, and there's a there's a there's a there's a bird that's flying all around you constantly. It's amazing. You've seen that bird once, like five years ago. It, it pooped on your head. Um, now Zakis' turn. As you see, what Clark thinks he's doing is moving Zach stealthily, is like smoothly <laughs> through that. Well, yeah, okay. D nobody else sees that, or you don't. Zakis fails a death save. Oh dear. Uh, as but the rest of you do see that Clark looks like he's trying to be his normal stealthy self or normal like sophisticated self. He's actually kind of moving with like large balloon steps as he's trying to move through. The poison is kind of fun. Uh, so yeah, Zakis bleeds out. Uh, Kuzaima. Well, hmm. Okay, exactly which square is this? Uh, I'm going to say it's hovering over the edge of the bed. Okay, because I need to know if I'm within reach of it or if I can actually uh, not get That end is the low end, end. so yep. it's only a couple of feet off the ground. Uh, yeah, but I don't know if there's a square between me and him or not. Uh, yes, there is. Okay. It's, you know, he's not directly beside you because that's where Clark was standing. Okay. Uh... I don't think I can get around that anyways. Um, okay. The doll is going to come up here and menace it. Okay. And, uh... Come on, come on. Which, um, which doll is this, by the way? Is it is it actually the, a doll? It's a candle. Candle, okay. Yeah, the dolls are both destroyed at the temple. Um, so, yeah, it's, a, it's basically just going to be there and go, ah! Um, while I... Oh, what the heck. It's more distracting than anything else because it's kind of hovering. Uh, no. Shoot. Can't do that. Oh, I've got one sling stone left. Sling stone away. Dink. Double 14s. Uh, that that's is a, a hit. 24 to hit. That's a definite hit. Uh, that's eight blunt damage. Oof. Since, uh, yeah. so. Yep. Since I didn't think to uh, buff the damage. But, uh. Okay. And then uh, I will. Oh, I don't need, uh, I don't need to this guy anymore. One, two, three, four. Oops. Four. four. Uh, five, six, seven. I'm coming for you, Zachis. <laughs> He's gonna finally get him some. Um, okay, so the save at the beginning of his turn doo -doo -doo, does not succeed. So the damage happens kind of again. Uh, Elzara gets to well, do damage and stuff. Moonbeam. I, I get to move the moonbeam. Um, no, oh, it's, it's, it's still caught. Oh, it's still caught. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, that's another 10 there. Uh, so that's 18, another 20. Nice. All right. What does it want to do? Oh, let's see if that happens. All, right. um, all of you are there, so it will express its rage and craziness. And it sort of expands out and just explodes into a vision of fear. All of you make a wisdom saving throw. Even if I'm dead? No. You even if you've already succeeded at this? Uh, this one... It wasn't this particular one. It, uh, I, this one, I, I this have one made you that You don't one. get immunity to this after okay, it's happened. Cool. So I don't do anything, right? You don't do anything. Hey! I'm afraid. Okay, so what did you make? 20. 20. 9. nine. Natural 17 plus 9. So 26. So the 9. <laughs> uh, you are frightened. Roll a d4. 1. You are, uh, as you look upon uh, Kuzaima, his skin starts to tighten and his body seems to stoop a little bit as you age 10 years. Okay. Well, magic. Plus oh, sorry, what did you roll? Nope. One. Oh, yeah, okay. Right, what was your total? On the D4, one. No, no, the, the total on the saving throw, sorry. Nine. This is, hmm? Nine. Okay. Actually, you don't. It's by five. It's one of the few yeah. ones that's by five. Sorry. Uh, 
Oh shit, this is one of the ones you're immune to, so it didn't matter, you guys wouldn't have done it anyway. You weren't there last time it was there, so. Most oh, fear, fear effects are, that's I, why I was asking. It usually calls it out a lot more broadly than that, I just yeah. had to re- Okay, but it still affects you. Yep. Uh, it affects for one minute, so you can track the turns if we need to. Uh, and now it is going to... Fly upward. <laughs> You don't know where it is at once it passes through the wall. Elzera. Well, um, uh, it is in the wall. It is out of sight. Cool. Um, I am going to hold an action. I'm going. Uh, actually, I'm going to walk to the middle of the room. Okay. Uh, and then hold an action that when I see the creature stop its movement. Okay. I'm going to move my moonbeam onto it. Okay. It's a little bit of a weird one, but that because it is an action, it makes sense. Yeah. All so right. w- once it is done moving on its turn. Gotcha. Is Clark Clark again, or is it? Excellent question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to hold that as an action, and what spell slots do I have left? I don't have spell slots left, yo. That's fine. Um, like, I have some, but I only have very high level spell slots, and I'm not... How, How bad are you looking? He's down. That's pretty bad. Got one save out of three. Hopefully the okay. next ones will not be a one. Cool. Fuck, I just jinxed it. <laughs> cool. Um, All right. <laughs> I, I don't want to use a six-level no spell slot on you. Sorry. Clark. No, no, there's still a thing going uh, on. You feel the desire to strike down those era, but that's oh, only cool. lingering desire from some other memory. Huh. So I don't want to do it now? Nope. In fact, she looks, looks wonderful in the purple and blue. You've never seen her skin that color of yellow yet before, and her hair keeps changing in shape. Uh, Clark will stand at ease for the moment, assuming okay. that there are no exterior threats. Clark the stands with, with uh, the, the glaive kind of there, puts his hand on his hip, broad legs broadly apart, and smiling like an idiot. Mm. <laughs> kind of. But to you, perfect martial at ease. Yeah, for sure. Um, Zakis. Make save. Don't be one. Well, that's an eight, so that's still a fail. Unfortunately, you're bleeding out on the ground. Uzaima. I walk over to him and give him a potion of healing. I put it in his hand and say, use this when you wake up. <laughs> a little note attached to it. Drink me. Drink me. <laughs> that almost turned it up my nose. <laughs> Same. Okay, it doesn't do much, but you're back to five hit points. Woo! It's better than fucking zero. All right, temptations. That was beautiful. <laughs> uh, Almost as beautiful as something that happened in an Adventure League game that I will talk about later. Okay, <laughs> uh, okay. let's turn. Let's see. Options, options, options. Just like, are you trying to kill me? No. Okay. Okay, I, I just saved you. Thank you. Good, good. Clark? Clark was possessed. He's not possessed anymore. Are, are you sure? He seems pretty dangerous. He stopped stabbing people. That doesn't mean he won't resume again. Like he's you earlier. seem dangerous. <laughs> think, it flies over here. I think he's stoned. Oh, over no. <laughs> Your held action goes off. Hello. There's a spectral thing. Oh, uh, right it off. gets moved yeah. onto <laughs> Buddy. Yep. Oh, no. Hey fam, how we doing? And so it tries to make it safe. Not twenty. Ooh. Cool. Do I have to make a safe? Yes. When your turn comes up. When your turn comes up. Yep. Uh, that is nineteen damage. So halved on a success. Ooh. Okay. And it strikes at Kuzima. 
for a 24. Mm -hmm. If Clark wants to drag you out of it, it would help. 23. It, 23. It would make you not. Uh, for 13 necrotic damage. Hey, I'm out too. Oh no. When Clark has two arms, you can drag both of us. <laughs> well, I'm not actually in it. Oh. Although technically I should uh, yeah, be. It, doesn't it, go it through should the wall. be occupying your square, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, that is its turn. It doesn't have bonus actions. Those are reserved for others. However, Elzera, it is your turn. Hello. Um... I'm going to move the moonbeam from nice. <laughs> people who are down and being tried. I'm just going to move it. Um, it is kind of hovering possessively over Zaka's body, as if it wants to possess it. The thing, or oh, that is not mm -hmm. actually against the rules. So I'm actually going to do that. Um, it's only a ten foot ceiling. Yes, but it's a. I can move it up so he, because he is prone can it hover in the ground I think we did look at that once and it was like it was weird but it worked yes although you can't see the ceiling I think you have to be able to see the the point of the nope, spell it's not one that that has that mm, I'm pretty sure both the movements are move within sight Because the one that has the height restriction is uh, Thunder or Cloud or it's, whatever it's that is. It's weird, mm -hmm. but it is a point within range. If you can't see the point, it's not in range. Yes. So, so you, you couldn't put it in a wall, but... I can uh, move the point of focus. It, it, it weirdly is a five-foot-tall cylinder. Or five, no, five-foot radius cylinder. Five-foot radius, 40-foot tall. tall. Yeah. Um... Which I have to Ooh. see. Yeah, it's it's so yep, weird. It, it, it should be up to sixty feet in any direction, yeah. not yep. to a point you can it, see. It really should be a point on the ground within range. That would solve mm -hmm. the, the, yeah. the weirdness That's here, but what, it's not there. So, yeah. yep. Uh, so I'm going to move it because Zacchus is prone, mm -hmm. and within theory, he is not ten. As feet long tall. as he doesn't stand up. As long yep. as he does not stand up. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's almost ten feet tall. He's like seven and a half. So. Um. But but he's not ten six, feet tall. Six foot ten. Wide. <laughs> Didn't you gain an extra foot and get over ten seven that feet? That was like the no, foot of the He was oh. five ten. Oh, you were short to begin with. Okay. Yeah. Then I became six foot. Six. That's yeah, average six, six. for an elf yeah. or a human in this world. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway. So you kind of it's so now hovering weirdly. It's hovering halfway. five okay. five feet up in the ground. So he is, Buddy is still in it. Yeah. But Zacchus is no longer in it. Okay. Yeah. But he's only partially in it because it literally was going over to to hover over and possess his body, and yeah. then he starts moving. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, but if right. he is still standing, he is still. All right. Yeah. Uh, his head enough. is still. Sure in goes it. down <laughs> close to the ground. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is my action. Clark, you're up. Uh, oh, uh, actually, I, I sorry. Is there action. anything else you want to do? Because that was your your action. Yes, uh, I still have a bonus. Uh, Zachus, are you awake? Nope. No, you are. I have five hit points, I think. Cause didn't oh, wait. Uh, oh, yeah. Conscious. Okay. Oh, so yeah, you yeah, are yeah, conscious. Yeah, yeah. Because I might, you're getting my last level four spell. I'm all good. Feels like a pile of bodies. <laughs> Someday I will have a combat that survives a moonbeam. <laughs> I did not use it for months. No, no, it technically only lasts for a minute. I've never had a combat where the time, I think, only oh, once maybe. Four. Eight. Uh, Ten, eleven, fifteen. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, that goes back down to six. Hello. Uh, right. And that is my turn. All right. Because that way we'll stand up because he's too short to get hit by it. It's Clark's turn though. It is. Yep. Uh, one step forward. I hope he's not possessed because yeah. we're all fucked if we. <laughs> the ghosty is actually only ten feet from me yep. because of walls and such. Yeah. So I'm gonna strike at it if I could. Uh -huh. Sure. With the glaive, within the reach and whatnot. Never mind. That's cut. Uh, twelve. 20, Twenty-four. I appreciate 24 that hit. method of doing math. <laughs> <laughs> that is my favorite. This one again. Seven. Nope. Six. 
<laughs> I'm just gonna wait till the numbers settle. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's sorry. like watching one of those so one of those uh, spinning wheels for Wheel of Fortune. Nine. Sometimes or, uh, mathing out loud right. is necessary. Oh, I get it. I totally get it. Eleven plus uh, three is fourteen with necrotic mixed in. Okay. How does this appear? As you are oh, right. take it out into the wall, chunk. Okay. A little twist and a pull. Okay. Uh, as you twist and pull and retract back the glaive, it is as though a portion of it has been a- attached to it by glue or by taffy, if you will, and it sort of stretches the form and visage as it begins to scream and wail. As all of you see, except for Clark, this uh, this form being drawn in, shredded and transformed into dark shadow that revolves around the blade. What wow. Clark sees is a lot more colorful and kind of looks like a lion consuming a, a rabbit, but doing so by eating one of its, one of its legs, and then eating one of the other le- legs, and the rabbit's kind of happily jumping around as the, 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 uh, the lion plays with it a little bit, and then until finally it consumes it, and the lion roars happily. The roaring happily is what the rest of you hear as, no, I cannot go this way. My revenge will be satisfied. I miss you, my king. And that's the last you hear. Wait, can you from this terrible woman? I, I, I can write it down. Well, all right, it's, it's going to be on the on, it's the, on the recording. On the recording. <laughs> we have that advantage. At that point, and it disappears. And who said that? Sorry, the that is the the possessor. The possessor, okay. The strongest of these, as it is now contained and consumed by the glaive. So that's another point for the glaive. Got it. Uh, and for the time being, all is still. All is quiet. Slowly getting up at five hit points because, ouch! You step up and your head sheared off by the moonbeam. No, I, I, no, <laughs> I sit up. I sit up. It's only five feet off the ground. I'll like do a roll. Singeing hairs. <laughs> well, sitting up is only three feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In any right. case, I was joking. <laughs> um, I'll just kind of like roll towards the beginning or the center of the room. I presume you, you do you take down the moonbeam and yeah. place it somewhere? Uh, I, I would move it, because I'm still not sure of the situation, mm-hmm. but once it... And if it's going non-combat, it'll be gone in 20 seconds anyways. So. Yeah. As you all take a deep breath and listen to hear anything more, the only sounds you hear are each of your deep breaths. Clark. Combat seems to have finished. Clark has a strange look on his face. He looks happy. Why did you kill me? Twice. Eye. His eyes aren't quite focusing. What do you mean? I mean, I killed a thing, then I went to assist us in combat, and you you struck me down. Then I woke up, I forgot how, and you struck me down again. There was a spirit in him. Uh, I can't explain those actions. Your mind was possessed. You hear one very clear voice ahead and above all the others you who are you? You know, no, we it. don't. Clark will say, I was Glade possessed. Talking. Okay. If you Sorry. Let, if you let us help more, we can divert from such things happening again. Are you And then right? there's a clear female voice. One you just, well, one they just heard screaming out loud. Mm. Satisfy my revenge, and I am yours to command. Do we hear any of this? Nope. Okay. Clark is just having this weird internal conversation. Uh, I hit him with a drug dart. Uh, Trooping out. Yes. I thought it would put him to sleep, but... Mm. Clark will say aloud, uh... Who? Who what? Just who. <laughs> Maybe he thinks he's an owl. Clark will look around like he's talking to somebody. Um, you do kind of see, in the periphery of your vision, you see a person. Okay. And at first it's indistinct, but as you pay a little bit of attention to it, um, the, the figure becomes more solid, at least in your vision. It is an elven woman, okay. dressed in finery. Um, almost dressed in royal 
clothing. Okay. My name is Queen Isolde. And that's where I will end for the evening. Clark's like, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> and that was just in his head? That was just in his head. Fuck. Okay. And maybe babbling a little bit about it, but not really sure what that means. So, for those of you watching along at home, from the visceral reaction of a couple of the players... <laughs> You may imagine that that was another little uh, bombshell from a very long time ago. Yeah. Um, perhaps we will delve a little bit more I'm into... I'm still convinced the, that Embrol killed the king, yeah. We'll perhaps uh, <laughs> delve a little bit more yeah. into the mystery if they choose to follow that particular threat. So, I, I don't want to keep like learning from Emerald, but yeah, I, I wouldn't put that past him. Also, with a lot of different things to put together, pieces and parts of Emerald's own story, what will their conclusions be? Well, we will find out... Uh, perhaps. Now, here's the funny problem. It's not funny. Let me uh, switch back to the Bane thing so we're not all at a distance here and you can see us quite clearly. There we go. Hello. So, uh, April is uh, full of potholes. Um, I want to make some sort of Game of Rome, Game of Thrones reference where it's like, it is dark and full of potholes, but it's actually kind of bright out and the weather's been turning kind of nice. Well, Although Brennan, it's raining. Brennan is full of potholes. It's very wet and full of potholes. And flooding. Uh, yeah. And flooding and all kinds of other things. Now, I'm going to make a small plug here. I don't normally do something like this, but if you are watching and enjoying this, I work at a radio station, which is a non-profit uh, uh, community radio station. Um, over the summer, they may actually be hosting us as a space while it gets way too hot in my apartment to play. So uh, as, a, as a thank you to them, uh, it happens to be our fundraising month now, so I am also the staff for that radio station, so like I said, a little self-serving here. But if you were to donate anything at all, that would be appreciated. Uh, not, a, not a requirement, not a request necessarily. Well, I guess a kind request. chsrfm.ca slash donate. You can join the monthly Patreon. You can donate a one-time amount. It doesn't matter how much. Um, if you leave a note that simply says that you are watching this, um, I will eventually get those notes, and I can, I will thank you myself directly. Um, but that said, uh, we're not going to be playing again until mid-May because that's the way life works. I believe it is May the 12th will be our next date. I think that's um, what we said. And then uh, we will play for two, maybe three weeks, and then I'm away for another weekend, possibly two. Uh, so we're going to get as much gaming as we can. And I know Inner Maritime is in there somewhere, so there's a couple of other things that might disrupt our weekends. But thank you for enjoying it. If you do, well, actually, I don't want to give the spiel. I want to turn it over to other people to give the spiel as far as what they can do. So Spiels. Spiels. Let's start with social media. We Hello. have some. We have some. Uh, I unfortunately just ended exams and kind of forgot to update that we were pl playing today until like 20 minutes before the episode. But... Usually on Legends of the Drown Dials on Facebook, uh, I update when we are playing, if we are not playing, uh, and then there is Watchers of the Drown Dials um, on Facebook as well, which is the group where we actually have more discussion type situations that happen, uh, and other people post as well. Um, and yeah. And uh, and otherwise, if you happen to see us on YouTube, of all places, in the in the. Uh, archive section, you'll notice the link in the description, I'm sure. Um, you can subscribe and like our video, and if you would, please pass it on to a friend. And to get notifications, please smash that bell. <laughs> and all the archives of our first recorded then streamed games are up on uh, on uh, YouTube. I believe it's this is the 32nd or 33rd episode. Something like so that. So if you're interested in some of the backstory, we don't we didn't start the campaign with this, but we, we uh, have kind of uncovered a lot of the stuff since then. Uh, until then, uh, I want to thank my players for playing. Yeah. Um, you guys have, a, have a, a, always put me through the ringer <laughs> when it comes to combat, and I hope it was an interesting episode. I'm pretty sure it was the other way around this combat. Oh, well, we'll <laughs> see, perhaps. <laughs> so, uh, without further ado, thank you and good night. Oh. Or good morning, if you happen to watch this overnight. I mean, I can't.